going to know. <laughs> oh, shut up, you. Hey, you, I thought we were having tea. I didn't say we were having tea. I don't like tea unless it's fresh brew. That's why I've made myself coffee. Well, I don't like coffee, and let's face it, there are two of us. Oh, stop mithering. There's another flask over there. Go and get yourself one. <laughs> I haven't even got to the market yet. Yeah. Hey, wait till we get that gale up the trouser legs. Right. <laughs> Rain's forecast, you know. Deep depression over jeans stall. <laughs> Listen, can you have a day to remember? Something to tell grandkids. Well, you know why Mr. Bodwin's sending us, don't you? Because he reckons not for you two. That's why he's oh. sending us. Cheeky monkey. We're a great team, aren't we, Vera? Of course we are. Okay, when I start into my way, Elsie does a strip seize, you can't get near that stall. Streets flat from end to end, didn't you see it on ITN? Oh, take the notice of them. <laughs> hey, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah. Will you just tell them? Just tell them what, what me and Elsie got yesterday. Not bad for the first day. But if they're so flaming clever, what are you sending us for? Well, it's share and share alike here, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if these two can sell jeans when they're worried about the wind blowing their hairdos, you'll make a cakewalk of it, won't you? <laughs> won't you? Oh. Well, we'll murder them. All right, off you go then. Your burner's already loaded up. You show your ropes when you get there. Oh, and he's set up this little changing room, so if anyone want to try them on, they've got the facilities. Hey, well, we never had facilities, did we? Didn't need them, did we? Right, and on your bikes, and if you want to earn a few more bob more than your three-day week, earn yourself a bit of commission. Oh, we'll make us flaming fortunes. Oh. We're still over stock, though, aren't we, Mr. Baldwin? It wouldn't cook, huh? I've got garments coming out the windows. Now, we'll have till we get this market thing going. Uh, well, me and our same girls will help you out. We'll just work a bit slower, eh? <laughs> that what you've been doing all these years, then? Helping me? I'll tell you what, though, you've got to feel sorry for him, haven't you? All the other one. As true as I'm riding this bike, she sat in a chair in that back room. I put an apron round her shoulders and I looked at her hair and I thought, hello, there's something funny here. A wig? <laughs> she wanted you to cut a wig? Perk it up, she says. It's getting a bit past it. <laughs> you get the right ones, don't you? Oh, what do you know? I've had them coming in with about three hairs each side, asking for a fire force it majors. They weren't enough for a cool jack. <laughs> oh, hello, the wounded soldier. How are you feeling, love? Oh, great. Uh, do you still want me? Of course we do. That's if you feel up to it, love. Oh, yeah, yeah, never better. I just thought with Audrey, you know. Oh, aye, there'll be plenty for you to do, love, don't worry. Right, I'm off then. <clears throat> oh, don't forget, the fellow from the Wines and Spirits coming this afternoon. No, you told us. We'll know him, won't we? He'll keep falling over. Oh, we don't. <laughs> Would you just it... get off to your council meeting? Now, you go and put the world in order and we'll feed it, won't we, love it? Uh, yeah. Right, I'm off then. Only don't... Just get off on your toes. Oh, she leaves me a dog's life, you know. <laughs> Sit down, love. Oh, they love being boss fellas, don't they? It makes them feel all wanted. <laughs> right. Oh, there's not much for two of us, is there? Oh, there will be, lovey, later on. Ah, how do you know that? Do you read it in your teacup? Do I look like Gypsy Rose? Lee? <laughs> no, Morning. it's a... Oh, hello, love. Hello, love. Nice to see you back. Nice to be back. Now then, what can I get you? Nothing, love. Just come to have me out, don't Oh, gosh, you have had your load of coal. Uh, no, love, she has actually come to have her hair done. I've set up a little salon in the back room. Madam Audrey, stylist to the stars. Haven't you heard? No, nobody tells me no. Does Alf know about this? Oh, yeah, yeah. He gave it his blessing right from the start. I mean, he indulges my every whim he does. Oh. Right, love. <laughs> right. Clearer now, is it? Oh, yes. Oh, Much clearer. I'm going to sell him underpants for your husband. Yeah, what? Well, for your husband, how big is he? He's a gent's best. Do you think we ought to shout something? Like what? Well, I don't know. I've never done this before, have I? Oh, and have I? Oh, hey, oh, blimey. Here comes Hitler. Well, 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 my dynamic sales force. How's it going? Give us a chance. We've only just come. We've been here two hours. Well, then, the customers have only just come. Well, what are you doing to attract us? I mean, where's the spirit? Hello. Hello, my diner. Hello, my lovely ladies. Now, how about doing yourself a favour and giving your husbands a heart attack, eh? Hey, hey. <laughs> there you go. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. If at first you don't succeed. How many pairs you sold already? I've just told you we've only just come. We've not sold any. Oh, blimey. Do you mind? Oh, sorry, darling. 
I should think so, no. Don't worry, I saw more of that on telly last night. Not me, you didn't. You're right. The one on telly was a little belter. Do you mind? I'm trying to sell her a pair of jeans. They don't help, do they? No. Are they all right, then, love? Yeah. Are you going to keep them on? I'd better, hadn't I? You never know who's peeping. Thank you for your custom. Right, then. What do you reckon we need? Well, I'd send more jackets. Yeah. Look, you're looking at them. Oh, I'm surprised you've got them all round the back, haven't you? The customers have got to squeeze through there, squeeze through there. Now have a look at them. Get them in front, stick them under their noses. Oh, yes, sir. Don't worry. Now, you won't learn this job in five minutes. Otherwise, we'd all be market millionaires. Well, he'd come in a big car. Just what you need. Do you want that one? Yes. Okay. They all come in big cars. That's why it's a good idea, this market selling. But we've got to get rid of the merchandise. But the customers won't come to you. You've got to grab them. Oh, so just been to us. Oh, I'm not saying you won't get the old one or two. I'm talking about the crowds, and we want the crowds. But don't keep telling them about this changing room. I mean, it's there, and if they want it, OK. But if they don't, you see, if they go in there, the first pair don't fit, they go home. But the chances are that if they just take them home, right, they're going to keep them, aren't they? Well, there's a girl just gone in there with two pairs. And she asked me, I didn't have to say, oh. Oh, well, that's all right if they ask. How long's she been in there, anyway? Well, long enough. Hey! Great sales figures. Jeans, pairs, minus two. Hey, have you been to that new pub that they've opened on that ship on Canal? Never heard of it. Well, it's only been going a couple of weeks. Somebody told me where it was called, but I can't remember. I'd have thought you'd have been, though, being a well-known gadabout. Me? I'm a right state-owned. Do you know I go nowhere since my boyfriend took me car back? Oh, it was his, then? Not strictly speaking. I mean, he gave it to me in a moment of mad, uncontrollable passion. You know what fellas are like as soon as they've cooled off. They won't flog him, oh. lot of them. Bye. Hey, give us a shout if you need a hand, lovey. Is tea ready? Hi, heck. Can this be a grocer's shop? It's exotic, isn't it? You know, all we need now are a few satin cushions and a bead curtain. And a pot of tea. Oh. I'll put the kettle on just as soon as I got rid of Madame Lasagna here. All oh, right, well, no offence, love, but hurry up and go, would you? I will, love. I will. Oh, Stay lovely, honest. that's great. Hey, why don't you use your feminine wiles on Alf? Get him by your car. Hey, why not? Mm. Now, what do you think would uh, get Alf into a mad, uncontrollable passion? Racing pigeons? <sighs> More like a steak and kidney pudding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see. I couldn't bear the thought of having the oven on just for one, so I thought, well, I'll treat myself to one of them things. Hey, it's great, is that, though? What are you putting them like, sandwiches and that? Well, out, as long as it's not too runny. There we go. Oh, will you just know it? Now, look, get your gob round one of these, but be careful, because they... Ooh, they are, they're red hot. There they are. Hey, they're all stitched up round edges. It's the boss. Uh, have you got a warren? Have you? Look, when you're finishing Nosh, get your woolies on and get down that market, will you? Why? What's up? They're giving away more than they're selling. Look, just uh, get down there and do what you did yesterday, all right? Oh, look, that's not fair. We've done our work. We did it yesterday. Oh, go on, Elsie, shall we? Can't miss an opportunity like this, can we? But can we tell them? Can we say that you're sending us because they're flaming useless? Say whatever you like. Just get down there, will you? <laughs> get your balaclava on, Elsie. Oh. Hey. Do you fancy a stitched up sandwich? <laughs> Is it right what I hear, Mr. Tilsley, that that young hoodlum who tried to rob Brian's garage comes up in court tomorrow? Yeah, and he's pleading guilty. Well, so we've been told. Well, your Brian won't be needed then. Well, he won't be, will he? No, thank the Lord for that. I mean, he's got enough on his plate, hasn't he? Do you know I still can't credit it? You thump a burglar for taking money out of your boss's till and you get done for assault. Yeah, well, that's the law. You're only allowed to use as much force as is necessary to stop him committing the crime and detain him. Well, how are you supposed to work that out when you're going at each other out for leather? Yeah, I mean, that can't be easy, can it? By heck, it can't. Well, the law's very strange, you know. The licensing laws are riddled with difficult things. <laughs> and that can be very painful. <laughs> well, well, on come dancing, are we? Hey, watch it, you. You look very smart. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Say by the bell. I was just going to go sit flying off. <laughs> can I have a vodka and tonic, please? Indeed you can, Bess. Mm. 
Our Audrey? Yes, not bad to say she's out of practice, Very is it? good. Mm -hmm. Ralph's branching out, isn't he? Hairdressing salon in the back room. Who'd ever have thought it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, not yet. He's got a gambling casino upstairs, you know. And, would you believe, blue films in the oh. backyard. Now, Mr Tilsley. I was only joking, Mrs Yes, Walsh. I know that, dear, but one has to be very careful in public houses. Now, people pass by, they catch the tail end of a conversation, they go out believing it's all true, and then where are you? I stand corrected. I take your point. Anyway, it's not a gambling hall and blue films, folks. It's a striptease behind a filthy bookshop. <laughs> now, Mrs. Walker, they know I'm joking. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of going to that Audrey to get my hair done. Why? You do it well yourself, smashing. Oh, yeah, and it costs not when I do it myself, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's smashing. Oh, I didn't mean that. I, I know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> not lived with you for 30 odd years without knowing what you mean. Do you know? There's some fellas lavish hundreds of thousands of pounds on their wives' appearance. Beauty parlours, facelifts, health farms. <laughs> to take you all your time to buy me a bar of soap. And if you did it, be flaming carbolic. Yeah, but you're not one of them, are you? I, I mean, you're not one of them. By the heck, you are. Oh, hey. <sighs> Where do you think you're going? Oh, I thought you were busy. Oh, so you thought you'd do a bit of courting, did you? Oh, it, it's so. I'm just talking to my friend. It's only a bit of fun. I won't be a minute. You don't mind, do you? Okay, I'm not your boss, but keep an eye on me. If I get busy, pop back. Hey, listen, you'll have folk talking about us, you will. You know it, yes. Ha that sounds promising. Ah, here you are, madam. How about this for the best bargain of the year? Now, look at that. Just feel the quality. Feel it. You could hand those down to your grandkids. Oh, well, it'd be like that then. Oh. oh, so you're back. Hey, listen, kid, can you manage by yourself? Well, I'm managing, aren't I? It's just that he wants me to help him on his store, you know, selling nighters and that. What are you never named for? Well, according to him, some women are very sensitive about buying their intimate garments of a big, hairy-chested fella. On the other hand, there's some like me that like it. So, if you've got a big, hairy-chested fella and a glamorous blonde... Now, look, <laughs> what about here? Well, he's paying a damn sight more commission than Baldwin, and he's got some very interesting ideas. Yeah, I'll bet he has. Listen, I'll tell you what, kid. You carry on here, keep commission, and on top of that, I'll, I'll give you out of whatever I earn, kid. It's only a bit of fun, isn't it? And life's short, isn't it? All right, go on, but watch out in case Baldwin comes back. I'm not going to cover for you. Oh, you're a good one, kid. I'm glad I'm with you and not with one of others. <laughs> I'm shivering, me. I've got shakes. Well, it serves you right, doesn't it? You should have wore thermal underwear. I wore mine. You don't care, you, do you? I care about me health. Why is it whenever I come in here, you're on a break, eh? You do it deliberate. Oh, that's what it is, is it? And I'll tell you something else, I know. I've caught flaming pneumonia on that market stall. Pneumonia? You weren't there long enough to draw breath. What are you talking about? Well, she has been shivering. Ah. Oh. oh, has she? Well, I'll cheer up. I'll talk about bonuses. Bonuses? Yeah, bonuses. I pay 5% on every pair yourself. Oh, you only sold one pair. No, you did better than that. You lost two, you ended up on the wrong side. And as Len Murray says, if the workers want to share in the profits, they share in the losses as well. And if he didn't say that, he should have done. So let's see, 5% uh, of two pairs. You owe me 40p each. Stop it out in your next week's pay packet. You wouldn't dare. Do you want that? I'm flaming emigrating, me. Yeah, but I still say there's no place like England. Yes. Ten years ago, five years ago even, I would have agreed with you wholeheartedly. Not today. There was a time when I was very proud of being British, but no longer. Countries riddled with envy, the streets are filthy, there's no national pride or even hope. Ah, oh, but we beat the Aussies at cricket now, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yes, we're very good at playing cricket, and our athletes can run faster than other people. But that doesn't bring jobs. What we need today is a Churchill, and there is no one in sight. Well, it wasn't until I came in, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Do you know, Mr. Yates, I think you could do quite as well as some of our politicians. <laughs> By heck, that's saying so much. I think it would be better if one or two of them were a bit sexy. 
Dynamic like. I mean, take that Canadian fella, uh, ooh. Pierre Trudeau, dear. Yes, him. Now, I would do anything he asked me to do with the greatest of pleasure. <laughs> well, I can't altogether subscribe to that theory. Dynamism, yes, we do need dynamism. Look, uh, as much as I'd love to get involved in this debate, I haven't got time. Audrey, I was wondering if you could give us a quick singe. But if you haven't got time... Oh, no, I'll be manager. Oh. OK, Deirdre. Ah, uh, yeah. Come on, love, in the back room. Sorry. Don't make me too handsome. I'll drive and crack as it is. <laughs> what a very strange arrangement. Must sound very surprised at all. Well, you never can tell. You know, I could do with a job like that. Trouble is, I'm not supposed to earn any money, me. Well, why don't you try opening a tattoo parlour? Hey, great. Now, where do you learn tattooing? Oh, I do hope you're not serious. Right, love. Hey, yeah, there's your change. Thanks. Bye, love. Oh. Right. I've packed everything up. All you've got to do now is wait to have the van with Vernon in it. When he comes here, have him load up. I've had enough. All right, love. You'll get off home, kid. Leave him with my boyfriend. <laughs> when does he change? Eh? The Incredible Oak. Or does he stay the same all the time? Go on off at your cheeky devil. <laughs> Hiya. Ta-ra, love. Here, drive your husband down. Oh, is that already? I must be able to let you out on your own. You're a smooth talking so and so. No, you're kidding. But there's very few ladies that ever could enjoy what you call a compatible working relationship with. In fact, there's so few I'd call them unique. But you're one of them. One of the unique ones. So what do you say? How about packing your job in and tapping on with me permanently? It's a good, healthy outdoor life. You make a lot of new interesting friends and earn yourself a pair of dollar for smack. Hey. You paint a pretty picture. Aye, we've got it to paint it too. Mm. <sighs> I don't believe it. I don't feel I will believe it. It's anybody, it had to be you. You want to think yourself lucky you still get virile young men knocking at your door. I'd laugh at that, but my feet won't let me. Oh, well, don't you bother yourself, love. It's just that uh, I happened to be looking through my office window, and who did I see limping along the street? Nobody else but Elsie, Queen of the Market. And I said to myself, hello, she must have taken a bomb walking like that, so I'm here to pick up the dips. Over there. Oh. Hey. Hey, you done pretty fair there. Who took all this lot, Vera? I suppose I just stood there watching. Now, don't get stopped for your home. She's not, neither there's a van, so you must have left her there packing up. Would you like a bowl of boiling water over your head? Because if you would, just stand there. No, just no, keep no, standing no, there. Take it I've enough of you for one day. No, the thing is, I've not got very happy memories about motor cars. Oh, I know, lovely. But come on, now you've got to put bad memories behind you, haven't you? Uh, you're right. So you think you ought to get one, then? All right, I'll admit it. My motives are selfish as they usually are. No, come on. I make no bones about it, Alf. I like enjoying myself. I mean, what on earth is life for if it isn't for enjoying myself, eh? And you could do with a laugh or two and all if you've earned it. I mean, Alf, you know what it's like without a car. I mean, you're trapped, aren't you? I mean, you're a prisoner in your own home. There's a bus every other Wednesday and then taxis cast the earth. Yeah, so you thought to yourself a little car, eh? Well, you don't want to be old before your time, do you? Oh, that's times what I think I am, love. Well, just make this one of the times that you think you're not, eh? Oh. Hey, I've just been knocking on your door. You won't. We won't get any answer, cos we're in here, aren't we? Oh, yeah, so I see. On it, there's something in the evening paper that I thought you might not have spotted. It's in the stock press. What's he say? Well, it's that boy, you know, the one you owe Brian caught. Well, it says here it's been remanded for social reports. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, no idea. I thought you might know. I'll tell you what it means. It means if they find out his man was chased by a coal man when he was three, They'll tell him not to do it again and send him home. They'd never. I'm telling you. Look, the criminal classes are divided into two groups, aren't they? There's your born villains and them that are misled by your born villains. I mean, all this social deprivation lacks a load of rubbish. Otherwise, everybody who was brought up on a two up, two down would be climbing through kitchen windows nicking, wouldn't they? But they're not, hardy. It's your born villains that are doing the nicking. And them that gets misled by and them. And them that gets misled, exactly. I'm inclined to believe that. 
And not only because Mr. Yates happens to be an expert on the subject. I think honesty is something you're born with. And if you're born honest, no matter how poor you become, you won't go around stealing other people's property. There are far too many people trying to justify the dishonest and the plain evil, and far too few concerned with the victims. Like our Brian. Precisely. Like your Brian. Had we better be getting back? Oh, she won't be busy. I'll buy you one. What about tea? What about tea? Are you by yourself? Can you see anybody? Well, where are they? Oh, heaven only knows. <laughs> Probably halfway to Gretna by now if it's got anything to do with little Audrey. Anyway, it's a good job that you can still laugh about it. Oh, I can. Till about next Tuesday. Then I'll stop. Don't tell me I've convinced you. Well, why not? You're right. Life is for living. So tomorrow I'm going looking for a car. Oh, well done. <laughs> Go to the top of the class and kiss the teacher. Hey, 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 steady on. Did you see that, did you? I did. Hairdressing salon in back room. Rini's name painted out over at shop. One asks oneself, what next? I reckon one does. I reckon you should have a word with him. Well, he is supposed to be a mate of yours, and you were his mayoress. Oh, come now, Bess. He's a grown man. Aye, that's another good reason. Can I say again, look, please? Can I borrow this, love? There's enough hot water for a bath, is there, Alice? Oh, there should be. I'll tell you what. I wish I had a boss who didn't care what time I showed my face. Well, if I'm late, he's only himself to blame. I mean, you cannot go plying a girl with drink the night before and then expect her to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed behind the counter the morning after. Mm, I know one who would. What, yours, you mean? If Mike Baldwin never gets wed, she'll get the ring all right, but she'll get a clocking on card alongside <laughs> it. <laughs> sure, I can't be doing with bosses like that. No, Alf is all right. You know, he's the sort that, that you, you can... can lead on something rotten. Well, I weren't going to put it exactly like that, Elsie. No, no, he's very understanding. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> you mean he understands where he's beaten? Yeah. <laughs> hey, did I tell you what we was talking about buying last night? Well, him doing the buying, I was just the one doing the talking. A uh, hairdryer. Elsie, you cannot go to Blackpool in a hairdryer. No, listen, a car. Alf's buying one. He's going to look around today. I said, you do love, because the longer you hang about, the less petrol there's going to be to put in it. Ooh, and very nice, too. I suppose he does understand his van it just to take you joyriding. Oh, well, no, he did mention that it would be quite handy for deliveries, but uh, I think he's got the idea. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he has. Anyway, see you later. Oh. Um, don't work too hard, will Oh, you? I won't. You know, even if I wanted to, I don't think Alfie would let me. <laughs> oh, ta-ra. ta -ra, Louise. Oh. Do you know, I bet I didn't get more than two hours sleep last night. We're fretting about it. I don't know how I'm going to be tonight with trial being tomorrow. Oh, they won't find him guilty. Not when they've saw the, said all the fellow were thieving. That's not to do with it, Vera. They're now saying that our Brian assaulted him while he were trying to stop him thieving. Listen, oh. mark my, my words, kid. Let's well, take one look at them baby blue eyes and that lovely smile that say not guilty. Oh, don't be so daft, Vera. Well, I would. Yeah, well, you're not likely to be one of magistrates, are you? God help us if ever you were. You're gonna sit there yakking all morning? Ha <laughs> I was just saying to Ivy to watch things, you know, while we get back. Oh, well, that's very good of you. You, get on to Tomlinson and tell him I'll be there as soon as I get these two set up in the market, will you? Yeah. Right, you set then? Yeah, let me give you things. Oh, yeah. Don't forget your picnic basket, your portable telly, anything to keep you comfortable, you? <laughs> Come with me. Did you bring any coffee? Yes. Oh, good. I was going to bring some, but I thought you would, so I didn't bother. Oh, you are going to be stopping with me. Not like yesterday. You behind the frilly nighties and me serving on the jeans counter. Well, it don't bother you, don't say. I mean, like I said, you can keep commission from jeans. Eh, while you're drawing twice, one's from Baldwin and one's from the other fella. George. George. George Carter is nice, isn't he? He's asked me to work for him full time, you know. I thought you were doing that already. Um, Elsie? Mm hmm? You won't say out to others, will you? I told you, it's not to do with me. Well, like I said, I'll see you all right, you know. He 
you, Oliver. Ta, just keep me going till dinner time. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to feed you for a fortnight. Right then. Oh, hello, Dale. Oh. Oh, one of them council meetings, are you? Long lunch hour, all expenses paid, one of them. No, as a matter of fact, I'm going uh, looking at new cars. Motors? Hey, I'll tell you where to go, shall I? Look, Eddie, I want a motor that runs, you know. I'm going to a proper garage, not one of your back street jobs. What do you call a proper garage? Well, Siddles, for one. Now, that is a proper garage, isn't it? Yeah. Little flags outside, even got their own gents. Well, when you're down there, you mention my name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a mate of mine from way back, you always said. No, do you think I want to be reminded? <laughs> you know, with all the people you know, Eddie, it's a wonder you're not a millionaire by now. Do you know what I thought about that? And then I thought, no, I will, that'll only put me rent up and I'll be no better off. Anyway, when you get down, mention Eddie Yates. He'll steer you clear of anything a bit dodgy. Ta-da. Ta-da. Mention Eddie Yates. <laughs> it's a bit sudden, all this uh, car buying, isn't it, Alf? Eh? Hey? Oh, no, no, not really. I've, uh, <coughs> I've been thinking about it for a while. You ought to take someone with you, lovey. I mean, parting with that amount of money, you ought to have a second opinion. Oh, yes, but... Uh... We'll take one of us. Oh, we'll go with him, won't we? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I could do with a bit of company, right enough. But that's if the other one doesn't mind, like. No, no, I don't mind. Oh. Are you sure not, lovey? Well, there's no point, is there? I mean, I get mixed up with our Tracy's toy cars, which <laughs> ones we? <laughs> I'll just get me coat, I won't be a tip. <laughs> Now, are you sure you don't mind, love? Well, no, there's no point, is there, Alf? Unless, of course, you'd rather it was me who went with you. Well, I don't mind. Albert. No. Uh, well, we'll be back in time for dinner anyway, love. Morning. Hello. Now, we don't want one of them boring cars, do we? You know, the kind you have to park around the corner when you're going somewhere posh. We want something with a bit of style. Eh, uh, love. OK. Hey, I will, sir. Is he buying her a car now, then? Well, to tell you the truth, Hilda, I think he thinks he's buying it for himself, actually. Mm. <laughs> Here, there's some more for you. We don't want any more. Well, he said I had to bring him. There's a stack more in van, but I burn can't get down with you. Oh, thank God for that. And where's Vera? Mm. Where she's been all morning and where she was all day yesterday. And what's she doing over there? Same thing she's doing over there as she should be doing over here. Selling, only she's not doing it for Mike Baldwin, that's all. So off they both went. And you know me, well, I'm not one for poking my nose in, but, uh, well, you have to be polite, don't you? Oh, you do, Hilda. Yeah, so I said to Deirdre, she'd been left serving her. I said, uh, is Alf buying a car then? Well, she said, he'll be paying for it, but it'll be her what'll be doing the buying. Who's doing the buying for these, then? He is. Oh, and you've seen what's happened to the name over the shop, have you? I expect you've seen it, haven't you, Mr Tilsley? Oh, there's no name to see, is there? It's been painted out on it, look. Exactly. I thought you'd have noticed. Well, what's there to notice about that? Well, he's taken his deceased wife's name down, hasn't he? Well, it's not surprising, is it? I mean, come on, it must be unnerving seeing that stuck up there every day. Oh, yeah, well, of course, that's the view I take and all, but, uh, well, there'll be some what'll say he's got someone else in mind, like a replacement. Now, who'd say a thing like that? I don't blame a chap getting a woman if his wife takes out. Oh, no. I would. Well, it's nice to know, is that? Thank you, Stanley. I'll tell you something else. What? If your name was on my wagon, I'd have it painted out. Oh, well, it's all coming out now, isn't it? All start afresh. That's the best thing. Right, well, you try it and I'll come back and haunt you. Just see if I don't. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Walker. Uh, is that a lager, please? Yes, of course. You're all right, love. Not so bad. Hey, Bert, I hear that that lad, you know, the one your Brian had his do with, had been found guilty. Well, he's pleading guilty, love. He'd no choice, though, had he? Oh, no. What's going to happen to him now, then? Oh, uh, he's been remanded for what they call it, thingamajig, uh, social report. Oh, so then they find out he had a deprived childhood, is that it? Something like that. Wouldn't make him a monitor at school, so he goes pinch it from petrol station. Yeah. Thank you, dear. I'll tell you where the mistake is, shall I? Yes, go on, Mrs Walker. Well, it may be that this young man did have an unfortunate background, but that doesn't make him one whit less guilty. Here, here, Mrs Walker. Yeah. When does Brown's case come up for hearing? Oh, sometime tomorrow, Lou. Hope everything goes all right. Sure it will. Thanks very much, Mrs Walker. Yeah. I know you're not one for gossip, Mrs Walker. No, dear. Why? Oh, it's, it's just some Matilda was saying. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it, should Yes, I? but isn't every stream that's tainted by its source? If it's something I should know... Well, it's just that Alf's gone to buy a car and Audrey's gone to help him choose it. Oh, dear. Yes, I know you talked about having a word with him. I oh, know. 
But you see, dear, in a delicate situation like this, one doesn't wish to be the fool that rushes in where angels fear to tread. No. You see, the trouble is, if you don't rush in soon, you might find yourself chasing up them six after him. Well, there she was, selling underwear and fancy nighties for this other fella, and left Elsie on her own. And she's been doing it before? Elsie says so. Well, that's not good enough, is it? Everything all right at the market, Ida? Yes, Mr. Alden. You left everything, did you? Most of it, but there's a lot left. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right, yeah. But what's it all in aid of? I mean, does she fancy this fella? Is he paying her or what? Bit of both, I think. Oh, he is paying her, then. Well, as he said he was. Well, I think that's just the flaming limit, that is. She's supposed to be out there for the sake of our jobs, selling stuff so as we can keep this place going. And what is she doing? Selling fancy underwear, never mind whether we're out of a job next week or not. You know, I know, sooner get my coat off, then I'm putting it on. Oh, are you going to roll this? No, I am not, and neither are you. I'll tell you where we're going. Where? I am going to that marketplace. I've got a few words to say to that lady. You'll see if I haven't. Oh. <laughs> It works out in. Hey, is it right that Vera's been working somewhere else for the last couple of days? Yep. See, I told you. And have you, have you not said no to her? Oh, I be luck. I'm just humble worker. I mind my own humble business. I haven't been a supervisor for several years. No, you haven't, have you? But I have. Yes, you have. Follow me, Ida. Oh, hi, love. What are you doing on here? Well, Elsie said she could manage, so I'm helping George on his stall. George, these are the mates. Pleasure to You never mind all that. Listen, you, you've been paid by Baldwin to sell jeans, and that's what you should be doing. But look, how it's no skin off your nose, is it? I might as well be stood about here as ten yards away over there. Aren't you forgetting some of you? What? I'm supervisor, aren't oh, I? Oh, God. I can't very well turn me back on you not doing the job you've been paid for. Your supervisor in fact, you love, not out here. Oh, you know that for a fact, dear? Yeah, I do. Do you? Listen, you. You get back there selling jeans, never mind this caper, cos otherwise Bold will hear about it, and that's a promise. Yeah, tell you what, ladies, have a nice pair of tights on the house. No, thank you very much. Come on, Ida. Uh, you got these in town? Of course I have, love. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What do you have to go check in them for? Oh, I thought you might as well. You know, you won't believe it. She's supposed to be my best mate. Do you know she makes me sick sometimes? Won't be for long, though, eh? Uh, I thought this might be where you were hiding. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Have you had your dinner? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know Uncle Albert, he wouldn't wait. Mm. But what about you? I thought you were coming home. So did I. Only everybody else who works here has gone out to choose a car and forgotten to come back. Oh, I was buying a car, is he? Yes, and Audrey's helping him. What make is he looking for, did you say? And I thought you were concerned about me missing my dinner, not what sort of car Alf was buying. I'm sorry. Did you get any dinner? Yes, I had a balm cake. I mean, Alf's usually dead considerate. I don't know what's come over him. Well, I do know what's come over him. Hello, love. Hello. Actually, it was the other lady I wanted. She said she could fit me in for doing my hair if I came round now. Ah, yeah, well, the thing is, she's gone out and I don't know when she'll be back. Oh, maybe she's forgotten. Well, she did have to go out in a bit of a hurry. Never mind that and I'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Tra. <laughs> Receptionist as well now. Ah, oh, I know. You've got to be willing to turn your hand to anything working here. Doing hair, buying cars. And I remember the days when it was just a simple little grocer's shop. Well, it has to be a quick one. I mean, we've left Deirdre at the shop. Come on, a very capable girl is Deirdre. How do? Us again. A pint and a gin and tonic. He had a nice drive from other end at street. Oh, he hasn't got a car yet. He's still making up his mind. Yeah, I must say the news gets round here very quick, doesn't it? Because now we don't get to know about in here. Do you know, we knew that the Russians were going to invade Afghanistan a week before it happened. <laughs> Nobody believe us. Hello, Alf. Is this Hello, Hello Mrs. Hello, I believe you're going to buy a car. Or perhaps you already have. Uh, well, not quite. Do you know, there were two that I fancied. One were a sports car. It, what make were that? MGB. An MGB. Oh, you know, it was all moonlight and roses, that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. 
Then there were another one that had been um, customised. Pardon? You know, it had all sorts of daft bits added to it. It had been painted up. You'd never seen such a monstrosity. Oh, pictures of surfing <laughs> all over it. You could drive through Sof and think you're in California. Oh, so what's it to be then, Alf? Sports or customised? Well, I've... Uh... Oh, they're a marina estate, he fancy. Oh, yeah, well, I've not made my mind up yet. All I said was that the estate would be very useful for the shop, that's all. Well, that's certainly a consideration. Oh, but you want a car that's going to give you a bit of excitement, don't you? Oh, there's no point in asking me, Audrey. The nearest I've been to a car this year, bloke offered to take me home on his bus pass. So... <laughs> Well, I hope you find something you like. Ah, well, I'll have to think about it and uh, have go back this afternoon, eh? I can just see you, you know, in a car like that. It'd do wonders for your image in MGB. Oh, yeah. When yeah. <laughs> one gets up in that market stall, there's absolutely nowhere to show for nowhere. None of that, you know, it doesn't affect me. You steal my hand, steal them. You want to get onto bar and to get some thermal underwear? Oh, well, you're still working here, then? Yes, you know. She's been pulling her work this after what? Don't ask me, Ivy. The only job I'm concerned about is my own. Well, all right, and the only job I'm concerned about is my own. And so's everybody here. Which is why she should have been selling jeans to keep us in what bit of a job we've got left. Listen, save your breath. I won't be here much longer. How do you mean you won't be here? I'm going to go work for George. Him that you're with at dinner time. He's happy to work for him full time on his stall, and I said I will. Is this right? I've told you, Ivy, don't ask me. Of course it's right. I've only got to play it without that. And if I'm earning it for that, it's not careless or a deep sea skin diver. Oh, so you'll be asking Baldwin for your cards then? Yeah, tomorrow. As soon as I've played it without that, I've seen George in Rome. Well, it's to be hopes you know what you're doing, Vera. Ah, so the wonder has returned. Did you sell out? Come on, tell me what happened. What happened was it went dark. Ah, well, did Bernard pick up what you had left? Yes, here it is. Aha, uh -huh, now that's what it's all about. Pretty fair, eh? So you'll be ready for another go tomorrow, will you? Yes, when I've thawed out. I'll be ready, Mr Baldwin. Now that is the spirit, Vera. I know, it makes a change, doesn't it? But you see, it's all for good at firm, isn't it? Now why can't everybody think like that, eh? Do you know something, Vera? If I had an award for Worker of the Month, you'd be right up there at the front. Oh, you've got a flaming cheat, you have. Sit yourself down, love. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You're not coming over your head, don't have you? <laughs> no, but my coming round has to do with Mrs. Potter. Oh? Alf, dear, I don't relish having to say this, but I can't sit idly by while people are talking. People talking about what? The influence that Mrs. Potter seems to have over you. Oh. Now, Alf, Believe me, I have nothing against the woman personally. I hardly know her, and she seems quite a good-hearted sort of person. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But the things people are saying, and the impression they get... Yeah, I can guess at it. Well, first of all, there were the erratic times in the shop, then the hairdressing, and now she appears to be dictating to you about your motor car. Yeah, advising. She's advising me about the car. <laughs> Not very practical advice, Alf. Quite, forgive me for saying this, but quite in keeping with her attitude to life. Yes, well, you've been very blunt with me, Annie, and I appreciate it. Now, just let me say this. You know what it's like when you're by yourself and you find somebody who can keep things ticking over for you. Yes, indeed. Never mind the shop wasn't open all the hours that people thought it should be. I was very grateful. Of course. Yeah, I don't see I have any cause to, well, apologise. Certainly not to me. You see, I like Audrey. I think she's a lot of fun. She makes me laugh. As a matter of fact, she makes me feel younger. And if some folk think that makes me look a bit foolish, well, good luck to them. Nobody's ever said you look foolish. Well, whatever. Reenie always liked her, you know. She liked Mrs Potter. Oh, yes. She thought she was, you know, a bit of fun. Oh, so you're not thinking of spending the rest of your life behind a shop counter? Oh, well, so come on, don't start asking me questions like that. I shall come over all dizzy the rest of my life. It's a big break in the habit of a lifetime for me to think beyond next week. Yes, well, he might be, though. What? Thinking beyond next... Well, yeah. What do you think he is? Well, I know Alf, and he's not exactly a playboy type. No, he, uh, he's a type that's always got one eye on the future. Well, would you fancy him? I mean, be honest, Alfie, would you? You mean, as a long-term investment? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I would. Well, me neither, Alf. Oh. Oh, you know, there's nothing more annoying, is there, than fellas getting all serious when you're having a good time. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. I'll tell you what's more annoying. When the good time stops and then you find they weren't serious at all. <laughs> oh, no, but, I mean, you know, oh, 
all you're looking for is a bit of company, a night out, you know. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they start talking about leaving their wives. I mean, you get this vision of them arriving the next morning on your doorstep with an armful of washing. That's <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> oh, no. That's all right for a bit of fun, but... Double eight, I need. Nearly. Nearly again. Fifty-seven, I want. That's uh, seventeen double top. You know, you wouldn't think that either Eddie or Mr Ogden would be any good at mental arithmetic, would you? But the way they reckon up these scores, I mean, they don't even stop to think about it. They don't, love. It's a knack with some fellas. Scoring at darts, betting on horses, treble chance on pools. They should have a CSE in it. <laughs> yes, love? Uh, find a bit of love, please. How's that? Oh, you jammy devil. <laughs> You don't know if a Vera Duck was coming yet, do you, love? Not yet, love. I think I'd have noticed if she had. Well, she does get in here then, does she? Well, no, not always of a night. I oh, just wondering if I got right place. Give us one of whatever she gets and uh, get one yourself. You've got right place, love, no doubt about it. That's a bind you owe me. Do you know that last arrow was bent? It was missing by a mile till it swaved. It's the angle I throw them at. Uh, are they very heavy? I've often wondered what they must be like to throw. Oh, yeah, Maeve. Have a go. Oh. Break another barrier for women's liberation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could even reach the board. <laughs> oh, go on. I mean, look at Stan here. He's not exactly what you'd call an athlete. In fact, even in dart circles, he's known to be out of condition, but he's just enjoyed an unparalleled run of success. Two pints, love. He's paying. OK, love. Aye, aye. Are you darting them, Mavis? Oh, no, I'm just holding them. <laughs> hey, bitch. Eh, how about me and my partner, Hawkeye, okay, here, taking you on? Oh, well, you and me, eh? I've never even played in the black. Yeah, go on, all right. Well, you don't have to, Mr Tilton. Come Honestly, on, we'll beat these two comedians dead easy. I mean, they're only fair-weather chuckers, these two. Just do what I tell you, we'll walk you. What are you having to drink? Give us a... Vera! Vera! Oh, the no. liberty of getting you one in, darling. Hey, I could do it on an hour. I've thought he's that gormous brain of husband than I. Oh, what was going on with that? I saw him about you offering me that job, you know. Yeah. And were he not too keen, then? Eh? Keen? They went spare. They went blowing bananas. Said one of his mates had seen me talking to a bloke called Mark. He says, listen, I'm not having it. Oh, I see. You know, it's only because it's not market where, you know, it couldn't give him monkeys about me. It's just if his mates notice. Well, happen I could meet him, have a few words and explain a thing or two. Have a few words? I like talking to Godzilla, King Kong. And things he said he were going to do to you. To me? He seems to forget, you know, there's laws in this country. Uh, come on now, there's no... No, they still go too far one of these days. You'll get yourself locked up. Well, good riddance, that's all I can say. Well, it looks like job's off, then. You see, he thinks they'll take Mickey out of me working for a fella that sells nighties. Well, it's sad, that, but you can't win them all, can you? Story of my life, you know. Every chance I've ever had, that big ape goes and spoils it for me. No. We are playing to win, you know. Well, you aren't doing any better, are you? They are, maybe, you see. We've got them rattled. <laughs> Oh, just a minute, love. I just want a word with Bert, all right? Uh, well, it, uh, but it's just that I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving factory. Thanks to Gormless Jack. Oh, I'll well, be working at factory till I get my pension. What a shame, love. Bert. Eh? No, no, I'm Vera, good. But look, can I just have a word with Bert, please, first? Bert. What, love? They are, maybe. It's what, love? Love, I've just had a phone call from my Brian. Yeah, and? Well, uh, it's good news, love. What? Well, you know that he's heard from his solicitor, you know that fella that he ate? Yeah, that, Burgess, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it appears that um, he's done a scarf or he's done a bunk. You what? What, from prison? Well, somewhere, you know, where they're transporting him. But the, the point is that if he doesn't appear, you know, if they can't find him before trial, well, our Brian ain't got a case to answer. Hey, that's good. What do I aim for now, Mr Tilsley? Uh, 20, uh, out big, Mavis. I should have had Hilda as a partner. <laughs> so, it's fingers crossed until tomorrow, then. Oh, I've been praying all the way coming up road, love. Don't let him catch him. I know he's a bad one, but, but for God's sake, let him get away. Well, at least until after our Brian's trial, anyway. <laughs> 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 Mummy and Daddy might have to go to court. And you know who's going to look after you if they do? Your Auntie Elsie. That'll be fun, won't it, eh? 
What did he say? He said, this is a recorded message. Well, what are you going to do? Well, the hell should I know? A phlegm in Mulholland. I mean, what sort of solicitor would keep you stewing like this? I mean, if they have not nabbed Ronnie Burgess yet, and he's scarf good and proper, well, they can't do me for unlawfully wounding him, can they? So that means, love, I might not have to go. And this could be the happiest day of my life. But thanks to Flame and Mulholland, I don't Calm even know. Calm down, Brian. It's only quarter to nine. Them kind of jobs don't start early. You can try again in a bit. Ah, it's probably having breakfast in bed. Well, I'm here going to start raving bonkers. Do you want some of... Oh, you're joking, aren't you? He'd have felt better if he'd have slept. He did sleep. No, he didn't. He was sighing and totting and groaning all night long. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sorry, love. I'm sorry if I kept you awake all night. together, aren't we? Look, I know it's rotten for you not knowing whether you're coming or going. I felt the same this morning when I asked Elsie to come round at one, because we might need a babysitter. Oh, love, you're not thinking of coming, are you? Brian, if you're going, I'm going. It might be the last time I... Hey, now, come on, love. I'm not even sure I've got to be there yet. on anything, can I? Nowhere. Well, it wouldn't be in there, would it, for starters? Oh, I expect to find a flaming thing in this mess. Now, where are they? Hang on. You're wearing them. You are. My tights. You've got them on. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, oh, yeah? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to put on? They're last pair. Oh, I'll fetch you some more from the shop. Audrey. When you invited yourself in here to stop, you could see very well that I am generous to a fault, but I do like to be asked. Elsa. What? Can I borrow your tights? I'll get you some more, honestly, Elsa. Think on you do. It's a good job I've got now better to do than go and sit and baby mind your Gail's child. Otherwise, you'll be wearing them round your neck. Oh. Any mascara? Fruit bowl. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Can I borrow your mascara, Elsie? Don't mind me. Are you going to court her, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, will I be any use, I ask myself? Not much. Exactly. I mean, I'll be a bag of nerves, cracking jokes nobody will appreciate. No, they're better off without me. Yes. Ah, oh, slipping three-day week. Oh, lucky for some. No, it isn't. I'm skint. Hang on. Sis? An advance on my rent. I'll put a little something extra in my wage packet. Those are the kind of love letters that I like. Audrey? Uh-huh. Have you ever been in love? Scores of times. <gasps> I wonder if Alf's decided what car he's getting. I thought you'd decided for him. Well, we'll see, won't we? Are those your fags, Elsie? Linda, come home. All is forgiven. Elsie. Have you got a light? No, you see, the thing is, Len, at our time of life, you get stuck in your ways, you know. Pound, was it? No. Half a pound. You see, you say you can see me in a little van. You know, well, anybody looking at me would say, oh, yes, Alf, well, he drives a marina, or a this, or a that, or a little van. But you don't have to, you see, dear. And that's where this little sporty job scores. I mean, it'll be blowing the cobwebs away. You know, it'll be a bit of fun. Fun, yeah, but not a lot of use. Well, I don't want one that's any use. I mean, I've managed without a car all this time ever since, well, for ages, you know. No, I've gone over it every way, and I always come back to the fact that this sporty job is the best bet. It's a lovely looking thing, you know. I mean, it's all neat and tidy and modern. I bet it can move and all. <laughs> ah, it'll be a new lease of life. What are you talking about now, Audrey, or the new sports car? Audrey? Uh, eh? Well, it's not the thought of a sports car that's getting you like this, is it? Like what? Thinking he's getting set in your ways and yackling on like a little schoolboy. And giving me half a pound of bacon when I wanted a pound of cheese. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll change it for you. Yeah, you do that because I've got to be in Wally Range to give an estimate to a bloke out there. Have you got an appointment today and all, Alf? Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm waiting for orders to arrive. Oh, I see. It's one of those sort of appointments. Yeah, well, I didn't want to leave you on your own, did I? Why not? You left me on my own all day yesterday and the day before. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Morning, Campbell. Ah, oh, good morning. Uh, yeah, right, well, we can get off then, Len. Oh, there's your cheese. Uh, right, come on, you can give us a lift. Ta ra! Ta ra! Was it some of I said? Uh, where are you going? Where are you 
going? I'm just taking these to Elsie. I borrowed her tights and they were her last pair. I won't be a minute. Still, it's not as if you're busy, is it? Sit down. Anything wrong, Mrs. Walker? Just thinking. Oh. It's a sort of anniversary this week. Oh, you mean uh, Mr. Walker's? No, 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 that's in June. No, it's 42 years since Jack and I came here. 42 years, eh? You'll soon be in for the golden anniversary. Hey, you'll get that gold clock from the brewery then, won't you? Well, you don't seem too chuffed about it, Mrs. Walker. Don't I? Well, you see, Fred, it wasn't what I wanted. Well, who gets what they want out of life these days, Mrs. Walker? Some people seem to manage it. I was always two people, really. The landlady of the Rover's return and someone quite different. Maybe it made it more bearable when Jack died. I could retreat into my dreams. You know, I, I never thought of you as a fanciful sort of person, Mrs. Walker. Oh. I wouldn't have thought it. Fred, if you only knew the places I've travelled to inside my mind, the people I've met, the ambitions I've had. I used to have ambition. I used to think I were Nat Lofthouse. You know, Nat Lofthouse, the, the footballer. The Lion of Vienna, they used to call him. Fancy calling you that. <laughs> or the Blonde Bombshell. <laughs> Who were that? Jean Harlow, I used to see all her films. Get away. True. Mind you, it can't have been all that bad, Mrs. Walker, can it, running this this pub? It's a, it's a nice little pub, isn't it? Cosy pub. It's got friendly customers, well, with one or two exceptions. Yes. I suppose that is some consolation. I have been the hub of a community. You might even say I've had my own little kingdom. Mm. Absolutely. What are you doing here? What do you think I'm doing here? It's our nice court case, isn't it? Hey, Sheriff, how are you, little lovey? Hey, can I put kettle on, love? I'm absolutely gagging. Yeah? Hey! You're not wanting to go, are you? I am going. Well, Brian won't like it. Well, you'll have to lump it then, won't you? He didn't want me to go. Well, you can't very well, can you, love? Not when you have it bad, eh? Okay. Elsie's going to babysit. Oh, eh. Uh... What's she done now? Nothing. Where's our Brian? He's down at the phone box trying to get hold of Mr Mulholland. He's been trying all morning. I mean, the thing is, we don't know if we've got to go with a Burgess having run off. Oh, I think we're here. We're in here, Brian. What are you doing here, Mum? Flipping heck, don't you feel welcome? I've come to go with you, haven't I? It's turning into a right family out in this. Your dad will be round as well after he's been to the job centre. Did you get through this time? Did I, yeah. I got his secretary, though. <laughs> she knew nothing about it. In fact, she didn't even know who I was. There was no messages, no notes, no instructions, no nothing. He might have started off to a flaming tax haven for all she knew. Anyway... She said it's a best go, you know, at the time stated, just in case. So we're ruling the know then, aren't we? I mean, you know something, Gail? I feel like unlawfully wounded in that flame in Mulholland. Have you had any breakfast? Eh? He ain't had no breakfast, has he, Gail? Brian, get yourself sat at that table. I know you with no breakfast inside you. And listen, I am not sending you in front of any magistrates full of talk like that. I feel like doing like Burgess and just disappearing. <laughs> I think I'll come with you. Have you not got no bane? I told her last night she ought to consider packing the job in altogether. Well, what about your independence? <laughs> You're called working in the corner shop independent. Listen, lad, lifting yourself up in a bucket is independence these days. Well, she doesn't need the money, and she's got enough to do at home. No, it's no good stopping you, Tommy. You get time to brood. I mean, I should know. And I'm only a three-day week. Well, I thought I said everybody wanted a three-day working week, more leisure time. Three-day working week is fine. But it's a four-day weekend that worries you. I thought you were babysitting. I was. I thought you were going to work. But I fancied a drink here and a nice hot pie. 
Shall I give him your love, Brian and Gail? Oh, yeah, now tell him I'll be thinking about them, especially Brian. Mm, I'm sure you will. Uh, I'd like a gin and tonic and a tater pie, please. Certainly gorgeous. And thank you for coming into my life. Hello. Just thought Emily might be in here. Well, she's not. No, only I've got the day off tomorrow and I don't know what to do with it. Is that a fact? Well, I mean, there's not a lot you can do around here with a day off in the middle of winter, is there? Oh, I don't know. Stan manages to keep himself busy on his days off, and he has more than most, doesn't he? That's if you can call propping up a bar, keeping yourself busy. <laughs> well, well, it's an art on his own, isn't it? I mean, people think it's simple drinking a pint in a pub. Well, it's not. If you want to drink a pint and thoroughly enjoy it, it needs talent, technique. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. I'm a pub genius, I am. Oh, oh, I better go. Bye. Right. I think it's an over putting meat in these pies, though, huh? I mean, that's tater, that is. Pure tater all the way through. There's some there. Where? It's there, look, I can see it from here. That, that's a flipping eye and a spud. All right, give us it here, I'll have it. What else do you want? Oh, a bag of crisps, smoky bacon. Smoky bacon, right. Mrs. Foster, how nice to see you. Yes. I wonder if I might have a little word with you. You can have a big word with me, Mrs. Walker. I'm not going anywhere. Unless, of course, uh, Kenny was thinking of kidnapping me. Oh, not today, I'm afraid. Oh, dear, you know I am disappointed. <laughs> it was just... Uh, smoky bacon. Oh, right. Thank you, lovely. It's ah. Right. It was just that, as a friend of ours, I think that you should tread carefully. Do you? He's had a very, very unhappy very time. Much. And in his longing to put the past behind him, he may... Mrs. Potter. What? Do you mind? Oh. Thank you. You see, I remember when my Jack had been dead for some years, I thought that perhaps the suffering was over and I tried to behave like that. But after every jolly occasion, I had to go back to that awful sense of loss. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? No, I don't. Simply that I don't think Alf is ready to involve himself with you. But I don't want to get involved with Alf either, Mrs. Well, now, why don't you make that clear to him? I don't really understand what you're trying Surely to Surely it is not fair to Alf to let him go in feeling as he does when it isn't mutual, or to let him persist in his delusion just for what you can get out of it. You are? Are you accusing me of leading him on, Mrs. Walker? Right. Oh, Audrey, I've, uh, I've got it. Come go, and have a look. Go on. A new car. And anybody else what's interested? Hey, new car. You know, you should keep your flaming cherry out of it, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> what well, that one I told you about. What about black one? This is gorgeous. I see what you mean. It's a cracker, that, isn't it? It's what they call a Rolls Canardi, this, you know. Rolls down hills and canal to roll up again. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. I thought you'd like it. You didn't just get it because it was the one I liked, did you? No, no, it was an obvious choice, oh. wasn't it? I mean, I fancied a bit of a change and it'd be dead easy to park. <laughs> It'll cost you a pop or two, you know, this, Alf. Drink petrol, these do. Might be a bit cheaper if you just chartered helicopter. Mm. <laughs> Shall I take you for a little spin off? Oh, yeah. And there's all that matter, you know, Alfie, you know, the tax and the insurance, all that. Fire, Alf, you need a shoe on to get in there, lad. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, Alf. ta -da. You'll get no peace in that, Len, you know, a flashy job like that. You'll attract the fuzz like flies. They'll be breathalyzing him every 500 yards, they will. Hey, Fred. What's that? It's a lovely car, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Bloody lovely, Len. Hey, Audrey's not so bad either. <laughs> <laughs> should they give a penalty? No way. I mean, that left half, he punched that ball down the wing, the wing had got no chance. I mean, what could he do with it? He'd come at him at an awkward angle, didn't it? They don't have left half and wingers anymore, Dad. Huh? Well, whatever they do, Look, they? Dad, what are you talking about footy for? You know nothing about it. I was just trying to make conversation, Look, that's all. Look, a bit of peace and quiet if you don't Sorry, mind. sorry, all right. I just thought, you know, it might take your mind off things. Where's that flipping Elsie? 
Look, yeah, perhaps you'd better set off without me, eh? Well, there's one thing about Elsie you can always rely on her. She's always late. Brian, you could go and put a tie on. Will you stop telling me what to do, Mum? Well, you think you're talking to us, Sarah, I like. Look, it'll go against you, won't it, if you haven't got a tie on? Look, I'll go and get a tie, if you like, and I'll bloom and hang myself with it. Don't talk soft, Brian. Well, leave me alone, then, Mum. Oh, wonders will never cease. Oh, I'm sorry, love, man. Flipping that bus is past when they want, you know. Hello, love. Hello, love. Hello, Harvey. Hello. Now, we've nearly given up on you. Look, I've put Nicky's clean things on there in case you want to change him, and his little wind jammer's there in case you want to take him a walk. I have had some experience with a couple of my own, you Just know. Just make yourself at home, Elsie. There's tea and lots of stuff to put on her butty. Right. Are we ready? Yeah. Come on, son. Excuse me. I was hoping I wouldn't have to go. It still might not turn up. Good luck, love. How about that, then, eh? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. What's up, love? Oh, nothing, as I'm all right. Hey, listen, you don't want to bother about what Annie Walker said, you know. I mean, she means well, but she always has to give her five pen a thing. Everything all right, love? Yes, fine. So now you're oh, back, good, Al. because uh, Audrey and me thought we might go for a proper run, you know, to Blackpool, somewhere like that. Really? Alf? Yes, love? Well, I've changed my mind. I think I ought to go to court. Court? I thought you said there wouldn't be a case today. But I can't be sure, can I? Oh, all right. Well, if that's what you want, I'll run you there. Oh, Alf, you are a pal. I'll just go and get ready. I'll see you in five okay. minutes, all right? She's worried. Look, Alf, I'm getting a bit confused about where I stand here. Oh, crikey, you haven't had your dinner yet, have yeah, you? No, it's not just that, it's... Well, look, you don't need two full-time assistants in a shop this size. Well, I've not got two full-time assistants. No, you've got one part-time working full-time, that's Muggins here, and you've got one full-time working part-time, so you're paying us if you had. Yeah, well, it's... Look, you can't afford it, Alf. Your name's Roberts, not Tesco. Well, look, I'll tell you what, don't worry about it, and we'll, we'll talk about it when I get back, all right? All right, Alf. So what's his score, Mr Mulholland? Has this bird just turned up yet? No, no, he hasn't. Oh, great. Hey, that's good, isn't it? Too ashamed to show his lying face, I expect. Well, we'll see. We'll, uh, we'll know better at uh, two o'clock when the case is called. Look, uh, I'm just going to get a bite to eat, so keep your fingers crossed, yeah. then. Hey, what about that, then, eh? Hey, it, Jay. Hey, he's bothered. Not me. <laughs> right, well, we'd better sit down again, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'll give over to you, the friend, the oldest trigger in town. <laughs> I've got some grandmates, me, haven't I? You're all against me. I... Look, what is wrong with me? I can't have a bit of fun without causing all this flipping ruckus. You might have noticed I've been a bit low. You should be glad I'm picking up again. We are glad. Oh, yeah? It doesn't show much. Ah, uh, ta-da. Oh, dear. Well, that wasn't very thoughtful, Fred. Well, I just don't like to see a mate of mine turn to jelly, that's all, Mrs Walker. Oh, of course, you were never like that, Oh, no flipping no. chance. Fred, dear, for two months you were like Bambi's big brother. Yes. I was never like that with Rita. Oh. What? All those fond eyes and little squeezes. Ah, trophy. I don't know. Why don't you men just admit that you are putty? Putty. And I should know. Putty. It's a very interesting subject. You think so? Yeah, right. A woman marries, right? Now, we'll presume she knows what to expect, a family, home to look after, all that. So, it should be something she's looking forward to. Ah, not necessarily. I mean, she might have married for blind, passionate love. She might know about the rest and hate it. Is that how you felt? Well, the blind, passionate love bit, of course. Yeah, but you hate the domestic bit. No! Well, do you like it? Well, no. No more than you like doing your paperwork. Ah, yes, but I didn't marry into paperwork, and that's the difference. I find it very difficult. Uh, any sympathy for a woman who blindly marries, sets up a home, and then starts bleating about it being a prison and losing her independence. Well, then you're a male chauvinist pig. No, I'm not. No, no, you're not. Of course you're not. No, it's just... Look, working here doesn't make me feel independent of you. I mean, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? I, I actually like working here. Or I did, anyway. But if I packed it in tomorrow, I wouldn't suddenly feel all helpless and housebound and dependent on you. I, I mean, I don't think independence is a job. I think it's a state of mind. Well, it is in my case. Anyway. Absolutely. Independence is a state of mind. So, rather than let Alf and Audrey make a mug out of you, why don't you hang your overall on the bacon slicer and leave them to it? 
I'll decide that, if you don't mind. When? When and if I decide. You really are an independent so-and-so, aren't you? But I'm lovely with it. Yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> Hey, how about a quick romp in the store? Ah, it's full of soup tins. We've just had delivery. Mm, tricky. Hey, I tell you what, come back when we've had a delivery of tea bags. You're on. <laughs> Daft you. <laughs> Fine. See you, love. It's me, Stan Ogden. Sorry, Stan, we oh, close. All I want is a bag of sausages. Look, I'm sorry, Stan, I am not opening this door. Look, Stan, it's nothing personal, but I'm in here on my own and I'm going to take half an hour off shop business to eat me bomb cake and do the crossword. I'll make a complaint. Good. Two for you buying sports cards. Look out his customers. Here, here. What time is it, love? Uh, nearly two, kid. Well, how nearly two? Five minutes two, two minutes two, one minute two, what? All right, keep your hair on. It's five two. I'm sorry, love. It's all this waiting. I know, love. Well, he won't turn up now, will he? Will he? Shouldn't think so. Yeah, it's not the person you're all wrong. Uh, anyway. Excuse me. Uh, charming. It's always the same, isn't it? What is? Well, the people that are most involved, the people most affected, people like us. I mean, they tell us now. But him, Poeface there, these petty clerks and officials, I bet they know whether Burgess is going to turn up or not. And are they going to tell us? No way. And you know why, don't you? Because we're just ordinary members of the flaming public, us, that's why. Shall I go and see if I can find out? Because officials don't frighten me, you know. No, I wouldn't, Ivy. We'll know soon enough now, anyway. And all Alan says if he hadn't turned up by two. No, I will wait. Time's dragging. Next five minutes going to seem like five hours. Oh, he's here. Yeah? Who? Burgess. That's him. Oh, no. Somehow I knew he'd turn up. Are you Brian Kilsley of Five Buxton Close Weatherfield and are you 23 years old? Yes. And you're represented by Mr. Mulholland here? Yes. It is alleged that on the 28th of September at the Four Ways Garage Weatherfield you did unlawfully wound Ronald Burgess contrary to Section 20 of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. In respect of this charge you have the right to a trial by a jury at the Crown Court or if you want you can be tried by the magistrates here today. But if after hearing the case and listening to your character and antecedent history, the magistrates are of the opinion that greater punishment should be inflicted than they have the power to inflict, you can still be sent to Crown Court for sentence. Do you understand that? Yes. And where do you wish to be tried? Uh, here. And do you plead guilty or not guilty? Uh, not guilty. Yes, thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, may my uh, client sit down, Your Worships? Uh, yes, of course. May it please, Your Worships. On Monday, the... On the evening of Monday, the 28th of September, the defendant was working in the office at Four Ways Garage, which your worships are probably familiar with. The garage, as you know, is self-service, and customers, after serving themselves, pay at the cashier's window. It was the defendant's duty to take these payments. On this particular evening, a customer, Michelle Fenton, asked the defendant to leave his office to help her to remove a petrol cap, which she said was sticking. While he was engaged doing this, Mr. Burgess entered the unattended office in search of cash or whatever else he could steal. The defendant saw him and challenged him. There was a fight during which Mr. Burgess sustained severe injuries, including a fractured skull. Those are the facts of the case, Your Worships. It is the prosecution's contention that the defendant used far more force than was necessary to protect his employer's property, or for that matter, to protect himself. In fact, Your Worships, after hearing the evidence, you may well come to the conclusion that the defendant turned the incident into an excuse to prove what a hero he was, and that he subjected Mr. Burgess to severe and callous beatings. What's he talking about? My brain did not so stay. I'd like to call the doctor first, Your Worships. She's rather a busy lady, as I'm sure you can imagine. Hey, Jason. Oh, you are. I was hoping you wouldn't be. Oh, I'll smack your bottom out, Robert. Hey, steady on. Alf. What, love? Well, would you be awfully mad at me if I were to change my mind again? 
<laughs> it's a woman's prerogative, love. One of your endearing throwaways. No, well, I mean, look, if the case is going on, well, I'm just going to be back to square one in a way, aren't I? I mean, I'll just be another long face at the funeral. No, don't say that, love. No, but you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not, there's nothing I can do exactly, is there? I'm not going to be of any help. No, I suppose not. What do you want to do, then? Do you want to go back to the shop? Go back to work? Well, should I? Well, we're more or less taking the day off now, aren't we? I mean, Deirdre's there looking after the shop. Hey, we've still got time to go for a spin in the new car, you know. Oh, wow. That would help take me minds off things, wouldn't it? Your carriage awaits, Your Majesty. Oh. Would it make any difference if he wasn't? I'm only humouring him. He's like a kid with a new summer. The X-ray showed Mr. Burgess's skull was fractured about here. What, in your opinion, Doctor, could have caused an injury like that? A blow. A severe blow. Such as having the back of his head banged against a brick wall. Oh, my friend really shouldn't put words into the witness's mouth. I'll rephrase the question, Your Worships. Could, um, could this injury have been caused by his head coming into contact with, say, a brick wall? Yes. He would have to have come into contact with it pretty violently. What was Mr. Burgess's condition when you first examined him in hospital? He was a very sick man. He was in intensive care for three days. Three days? Again, in your opinion, Doctor, were Mr. Burgess's injuries consistent with somebody, the defendant, using reasonable force to prevent him from stealing? Or running away after he'd been caught stealing? They were more consistent with him being violently assaulted. Thank you, Doctor. Talk of violence seems to upset you, Doctor. I tend to see the results of violence, most of it uncalled for. Any excuse to thump somebody. Yes, but it can't always be avoided, can it? I mean, what happens if uh, you're being attacked or if somebody's trying to steal from you? What I shouldn't think you're allowed to do is to break somebody's skull. Was Burgess's skull perfectly normal? Yes. It wasn't thinner than you'd normally expect to find? No, it was absolutely normal. There was a beautiful little boy there, lad. Is he going to show me his dimples? <laughs> yes, you've got some, haven't you, Nick? <laughs> I used to have dimples when I was a band. I did. Either side of my bum. Oh, Fred. It's right. You can see him on them pictures lying in front of the app and you're all together, you know. That would be your face you could see. There isn't much difference in your face. <laughs> can we have a drink, any love? Yes. Nick, what are you going to have, love? He's not having now. He's not going to be an old can like his uncle Len, are you, Chuck? You'll miss a lot of pleasure if you don't. Hello. It's only me again. Only... I saw Nicky's push chair outside. I just wondered if they were back yet, Brian. Yeah, I expected them back and all. They said it'd only be an hour if the case was chucked out of court. Mm, it better be. I'll tell you what. He'll be in dead stuck of his and he'll be looking at the month of iron bars if I know about it. Oh, Fred, you shouldn't say that. Especially not in front of Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Saw him do that, definitely. He grabbed his collar, I think. Then he swung Ronnie round and just bashed his head against this brick wall. Like, like he was a rag doll. Like he was a rag doll. Thank you, Miss Fenton. You, uh, you were robbing this garage, weren't you? I mean, there's no doubt about that, is there? I won't, no. Oh, no, you weren't. No, your part in it was to lure Mr. Tilsley out of the office so your boyfriend could rob it. Didn't say much luring. Pardon? I said he didn't say much luring. Him. You asked him to help you with your petrol cap, which he did like any man would have done. Yeah, but he were giving me the eye as well. I mean, he were giving me the eye till he saw Ronnie. That's what sent him raving mad, if you ask me. Because he thought he was on a promise. You can see he fancies himself. Did you really see Mr Burgess bang his head against that wall? You'd driven off by that time, hadn't you? No. And I saw him kick Ronnie as well. Oh, you saw all that from inside your car with the petrol pumps in between and at night. Yeah, I did. There were a lot of lights. It was like daylight. What's, uh, what's your relationship to Mr. Burgess? Relationship? Well, are you, uh, engaged? We're going to get married at Christmas, very probably. In other words, you're very close. I should hope so, yeah. Thank you. 
Ronald Burgess, please. They're all liars, you know, every flaming one of them. Oh, Brian will get his chance to put his case, love, don't you worry. I've had a word with the police. The case is definitely going on. Oh, Alf, and I'm not there. But he said he didn't want to be there. Oh, you shouldn't listen to half the things I say, Alf. I mean, I should be there, shouldn't I? What would Gail think? You mean you'd like to be in court? Oh, yes, if it isn't too late. We'll get you there. Oh. Start. Oh, no. Then what happened? What happened then? Yes. Well, it's all a bit of a blur, you see, because of me head. Take your time. Well, I got out of the office, right, and I'm running for the car. Now, Michelle's in the car. But he comes steaming up after me and catches me and just starts clobbering me and kicking me. And I'm reeling about and then, well, it's like I've been hit with a brick. Well, I was, wasn't I? And I'm out cold. Did you attack him at any stage, inside or outside the office? No way. I mean, he's an handy lad. I could see his muscles under his T-shirt, like. Look, I just wanted to get away from him. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. So, my client catches you with your fingers in the till, right? There was only about 20 quid, and he hadn't been doing much business. Oh, busy. So what did he say to you? Nothing. He didn't say anything, just came at me straight off. He didn't say, put the money back and you can go? I never heard him say that. Where was the money, by the way? Mr. Burgess. The police found it in my pocket. Oh, so you had stolen it. Right, so you've got the money and you're making for the door. Yeah. And quite naturally, my client tries to stop you. He went for me, all guns blazing. So you pick up a screwdriver and you start to hit him with it, about the head and the shoulders. No. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, so you can remember some things then. Remember them very clearly. Anyway, so you've got the money and you manage to get to the door. Yeah. And you run towards the car. Yeah. But you don't go on running towards the car, do well, you? Well, he jumped on me. How could I? Didn't you stop, turn and attack my client? Oh, do me a favour. I'd already got his measure. I mean, he thumped me once or twice in the office. I thought I was fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. My client will say you did turn and attack him. Well, he's a liar then. Well, in any event, there was a fight and both of you exchanged blows and my client got the better of you. And it's as he's holding you against the wall, the better perhaps to uh, detain you that you accidentally bang your head against it. Isn't that the truth of what happened, Mr. Burgess? That's not clobbered me. He could have had the money back if he'd have asked for it. Look, I'm not into violence. But him, if you ask me, he enjoys it. <laughs> There you go, Oggy. Hey, you know, it's the third time we've been in here this dinner. Oh, well, I keep bobbing in, seeing fellows drinking, you know. Makes a working man jealous. <laughs> you reckon they should shut the pubs at dinner time, do you, Stanley? Oh, I didn't say that. Well, I'm being very naughty. I don't know what Rita would say if she knew, because I'm supposed to be at the bank. Still, I am drinking with the boss, aren't I, Mr. Fairclough? No. <laughs> Pardon? I'm pointing a chimney in Cattle Street. Oh. <laughs> I'm in town buying a new bucket. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better go. The banks will be closing. You're not going to have another before you go. Um, well, no, no. The spoiler pub, don't they, women? Especially this time of day. Best time of day to be in a pub. Mid-afternoon. Sort of soothing. <laughs> yeah. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Your name is Brian Tilsley, and you live at 5 Buxton Close, Weatherfield. Uh, yes. You're a motor engineer in work, and you're married with a baby son. Yeah. Would you just uh, tell the magistrates what happened on that Monday night, Mr. Tilsley? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, before you do that, what is a qualified motor engineer doing serving petrol? Well, to earn some extra money, you know, um, to pay bills, uh, household bills. Yes, it's not easy to live off one wage. 
No, it's not. Uh, well, just tell the magistrates, in your own words, what happened on that night, would you? Well, um... Uh, well, I was in the office, and, uh, this girl comes up to the window. Miss Fenton? Uh, yeah. Mm. What she want? Well, she said something about a petrol cap sticking, and she couldn't get it off. And could I give her a hand with it? So, naturally, you left the office to do what you could for her? Uh, yeah. Mm. And what happened then? Well, I, I took the cap off, but it wasn't stuck. And then she asked me to fill the petrol for her because she didn't know how to work the pumps. And did you fill it for her? Well, I started to, but then I realised that um, she kept looking behind me at the office. And that's when I turned round and, and saw him. Burgess? Yeah, he was in the till. Mm. And then? Well, I dashed back to the office and uh, he was still in the till. So I said, put the money back and you can go. Yeah, now, why did you say that? Well, I mean, I didn't want any trouble. No aggro. Mm. And did he put the money back? No, he made a dash for it. So I tried to stop him. And then he picks up this screwdriver and starts to hit me with it. Where? Oh, around my body, my shoulders and on my head. Did he hurt you? Oh, yeah, it was a big screwdriver. Did he get the better of you? Well, he pushed me away, then ran out. And uh, you followed him? Uh, yeah. Now, why did you do that? Because I thought you said you didn't want any trouble. No, well, he still had the money from the till, you see. Oh, I see. And so what happened then? Well, he, he was running for the car, um, the girl's car. But then suddenly he just stopped and turned round and had another go at me. So a second fight started outside? Yes. And, uh, did he get the better of you? No, uh, I won this time. Yeah. How? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I just did. You just, uh, fought back using your fists in a fair fight? Uh, yeah. Yes. So how did he come to have a fractured skull? <laughs> well, when I pushed him against the wall, I was just going to ask him to give me the money back. But then he, he just slumped down to the floor. You didn't deliberately bang his head against the wall? Oh, never. No, no. You, uh, you just used sufficient force using your fists and your strength to protect your employer's property. Uh, yes, definitely. Yes. You're, uh, you're not a, 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 a boxer or an all-in wrestler, are you, no, Mr. Tilson? No, no way, It's just no. you look very fit, that's all. Yeah, well, I, I do like to keep fit, but, but that's all. Yes, so you're just an ordinary young family man who's never been in any trouble before for anything. No, never. Of course he's never been in any trouble before. What a question to ask. Well, I thought he, thought he did very well, don't you, Gary? <clears throat> You weren't supposed to leave the office to help anybody at night, were you? Uh, no. Then why did you leave it to help Miss Fenton? Well, she asked me to. Not because she was attractive? No. You didn't think you might chat her up then? No. But you started to fill a car with petrol for her, didn't you? Yeah, well, I said I did. <laughs> for somebody who wasn't even supposed to leave his office, you were behaving with great gallantry, weren't you? Not especially. And isn't that... As Miss Fenton says, isn't that what got you going? Upset you in the first place when you realised you were just being used. That there was no question of her falling for your fatal charms. No. You're not just fit, are you? You're very fit. Something of a Charles Atlas. Well, a pocket Charles Atlas. Oh, good. Was there really any need for that, Your Worships? I, I don't think there was, Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry, sir. Compared with Mr. Burgess, you're an athlete, aren't you? Well, you see, what I'm suggesting me. is this. I'm suggesting you used your athlete's strength and skill that night to make mincemeat of Mr. Burgess. No way. At what stage did you kick him, Mr. Tilsley? I don't remember kicking him. But he says you did. And you heard the doctor say his ribs were bruised. Your ribs weren't bruised in this fair fight, were they? No. Neither was your skull fractured. No. And you still say you used only enough force to, well, restrain him, I suppose? Yes. Perhaps you don't know your own strength, Mr. Tilsley. Are they allowed to treat him like that? Like he's a liar? Yes, love, they are. Why is the steam pouring out of your ears? It's not funny, love. No, I'll go if it's all right to come home later to put a light in the oh, window. It's all right. It's just he's peddled off with his damn fancy woman again, left Muggins here to do all the work. I thought you said he'd taken Audrey to court. Well, that's what they said they were doing. Ah, oh, but have you no romance in your soul? Alf is reliving his youth, his swainhood. I think it's rather beautiful. I think it's pathetic. Anyway, what can I get for you, love? Oh, I'll have uh, an Eccles cake for me. D. You've only got mince pies left. That'll do, honest. Oh. There you are. Mm. Well, I don't know. I can't see anything. I've checked and rechecked, plugs and everything. 
Anyway, hey, hey, man will tell us when he gets here. When's that? About half an hour, he said. That's not bad, you know. You do realise that Brian could be halfway to strange ways by now. And if he is, Gail will never talk to me again. None of them will. I think you're looking on the black side, love. Well, you do, don't you? Look on the black side. I mean, sitting here staring at a flipping car bonnet. I'll put it down. But uh, if someone is trying to pinch, uh, say, your, your wallet, then, uh, then the law says that you may use such force as is necessary to keep hold of it. And not just your own wallet either, your employer's wallet too, if you happen to be looking after it for him. You may stand your ground and fight your corner. So, let us uh, try and apply that to, to, to this case, uh, Your Worships. First of all, my client tried to avoid a punch-up. Put the money back and you may go, he said to Burgess. But it was Burgess who elected to fight. First of all, by trying to get out of the office, which he succeeded in doing with the help of a, of a screwdriver, which he used like a cosh. And secondly, on the forecourt, because he probably thought that having blasted my client once, he could do it again. Well, that was his big mistake. He lost that second fight comprehensively. Now, that, that was the scenario, Your Worships, if you choose to believe my client's version of the events, and I suggest you, you should believe him. He said that second fight was a fair fist fight, and the very uh, minor bruises to the loser, Burgess, bears that out. He was only really injured when he accidentally banged his head against the wall, and whose fault was that? Well, it was his own fault. If he'd gone quietly when he was given the chance, he would have lived to rob another day. But there was none of this, uh, oh, well, it's a, it's a fair cop governor for him. Oh, no. He chose to try to batter his way out of a tight corner like so many of them do these days. But he wasn't facing some poor old age pensioner. He was up against a fit, determined young man. And so he got what he deserved, albeit accidentally. I ask you to find my client not guilty, Your Worships. The magistrates will retire. Stand, please. That'll do it. Excuse me, I'm looking for Brian Tilsley. You left it a bit late, haven't you? Oh, he's not been sent to prison. Oh, magistrate's just this minute retired. Hello, Gail, Mummy, what's happened? Magistrates are out, love. They're just considering. Oh, I thought. Where have you been? Alf's car broke down, didn't it? Can we come on bus? Yes, well, I will next time. Are you all right? Love? Well, you know, wouldn't you, if you'd been a day like you should have been? Her, it's yeah. uh, been a bit rough in there, love. Uh, you see, Burgess, he just told a load of lies, didn't he? And I'll tell you something, if Brian goes, well, I'll kill him, hey. never mind. What? Hey, now he's losing his temper. Come on, right. see, it's going to be all right. Yeah. Honestly, it is. Uh, the magistrates are coming. Oh, God. Oh, now you can sample what we've been going through for the last two hours. Oh, come on, I'm sorry, love. She's just upset. Come on. It's going to be all right. Luke, if anyone's a jailbird in this family, it's going to be me. Come on. Mr. Tilsley, we have given this case a very uh, careful consideration, and we find you not guilty. You can leave the dock. Next case. Dad Holmes. Hey, how about that then? Well done. I thought you didn't have. Oh. Bertha Holmes. Hey, thanks a lot, Mr. Mulholland. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Mulholland. Listen, I could kiss you, Mr. Mulholland. <laughs> if you're going to, I think you better do it outside. Oh. 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 Hi, you, Bertha Holmes. Somehow Have you know Mr. Dress? Are you 66 years old? It is alleged that on Friday, November the 6th, you were drunk and disorderly in Market Street. No hard feelings, lad. Oh, not really, Sarge. That's one I don't mind, Lewis. <laughs> if it had been up to me, you never would have been nicked in the first place. Aye, aye, now he tells us, eh? So I hope we don't meet again. Oh, me too. Oh. Good luck, love. Thanks. Flaming coppers. Ah, oh, he's all right. Uh, yeah. he he hey, hey, Mr. Mulholland. Hey, thanks again. You were great. <laughs> yeah, I was quite good, wasn't I? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll remember that when I make you villa. <laughs> Cheerio, everybody. Cheers. 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 Bye. Right, what do we do now, then, oh. eh? Well, we could go for a drink yeah. if the pubs oh. were open, couldn't we? Well, they're not. 
So let's just go quietly home and tell Nicky he's still got a dad here. Oh, here, here, love. Yeah. Hey, come on, let's get out of here for a yeah. start off, shall we? I'm putting it on the table. If you don't drag yourself out of that bed, it'll get cold. It's up to you. All right, I'm here. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Ah, looks good, love. It's more than I can say for you. Have you seen yourself? You don't like something the cat's dragged in. You want to watch it, otherwise you'll be getting a scrubby tissue, will you? Give over and just get on with your breakfast. <laughs> oh, we should spruce yourself up a bit in the morning. So. Oh, you're all right. Get a scrape after breakfast. I'm not due there till after dinner. You know me. I'm not one for getting poncified up without good reason. Yeah, I hoped I was reason enough. Of course you are, love. And when I've had a, a scrape, I'll be all shiny and cuddly for you. <laughs> Aye, there's no doubt about it, is it? We're better here than pigging it at your old fellas. I'll tell you this, the way you two went on, well, I was just about at screaming pitch. Well, it weren't me, it were him, would it? I mean, I mean, I get on with anybody, oh, me. Right, we won't go into whose fault it was. We're out of it now. Aye. We're best off here, that's a fact. You're best on your own, you know. Do your own thing, can't you? Live your own life. Oh, we've said it. An Englishman's home is his castle. Yeah, well, it is only a little council flat, you know. Well, I'm not saying we weren't glad to get it, but it's not the end of the rainbow exactly, is it? Oh, get on with your breakfast, Fred. There you are, two lagers. Thank you. Shall we sit down? Yeah, let's go in there. I'm sure I know that girl. Well, that sounds reasonably enough. We know that she's not a Yankee tourist. We haven't seen round here before. <laughs> Ooh, don't it niggle you when you just can't put a name on somebody. You all by yourself today, then? Yeah, but not for long. Fred will be back in a bit. Take Mrs. Walker's car for this, uh, what do we call it, test. MOT. Yeah. Then mind the car. Annie Walker couldn't pass one of them. <laughs> no, that's not very nice, Eddie. I don't care. She says a lot of cruel things about me. Yeah, well, you deserve it. Here, yeah, Volva, a nicer, more lovely natured fella you couldn't wish to meet. And there's Annie Walker giving out that I'm uh, a bit dodgy. Yeah, well, she's your vintage model, is Annie, you know. They don't make them like her anymore. Yeah, because they don't want them like her anymore. Ooh, you wouldn't be talking to Bold if she was within earshot. <laughs> Just shows he's not as daft as he looks, then, isn't it? You talk about cars. Who's talking about cars? I am. That was a crafty move you pulled last night. I didn't know you were still up to them tricks, you know. What tricks? You don't know? I don't know. No. He only bought himself a little sports car, didn't he? Went off in a little ride. Took Audrey on a trip, didn't he? Way out in the country, miles away from nowhere. What happens, eh? He breaks down. <laughs> oh, nice one, Alfred. You don't want to believe a word of this, person. So long as Audrey believed this, that's Look, the vital question. It was a genuine breakdown. <laughs> that one's got bells on. I couldn't start it. I sent for the plumbing AA, didn't I? Hey. I just hope I haven't bought a dud car, that's all. Well, it's your own fault. When you said you were buying a car off Joey Siddle, I said, measure my name. But you wouldn't have it, would you? What are you getting at? Well, he's known for it, Joey Siddle, isn't he? He guarantees them cards as far as the first set of traffic lights. Yeah, <laughs> but it's all kidology, this, you know. Actually, Alf, come to think of it, if you got out into the open country, it must have been one of his better bargains. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you don't even know Joey Siddle. Know him? Of course I know him. He was in Walton with me, wasn't he? You what? He was in the Nick with you? Yeah, I'll tell you what he was in for, I know. He was in for driving the getaway car. Only it stalled in the middle of Lime Street. Uh, and he swore, there and then, that when he came out, he was going to go straight. And he did, straight into second-hand cars. <laughs> Only because of what happened, he had this grudge against motors. It's unfortunate, really. I nearly took him seriously. You have you seen those nice ones? Oh, I'm blooming disgusting, I call it. What's the matter, Albert? Got a monkey pie, have you? <laughs> no, the pie's all right. Only I couldn't eat it. Not with them doing the snug the way they're carrying on. Well, what are they doing? Oh, Albert, it's not as bad as all that. You were only giving it a peck. I bet you did that when you were caught in, didn't you, Albert? Not in public houses. <laughs> and I never stopped folks eating the meat pies, either. Oh, my. Right, thanks very much, love. Ta-da. Hello, Emily. Hello. Is my order ready? Ah, no, it's not. I know I said it would be, but I've just not had a chance. Oh, well, don't worry about it. I can call back later. I'm not in any great hurry. It's just as well. What time is it, do you know? Um, it's 
quarter past one. Oh, do you know, I've not stopped since half past eight. I was supposed to be going for my dinner at one and half's disappeared somewhere. I thought you were well staffed in here these days with you and Alf and now Gail's mother. Oh, yeah. In theory, we should be moored out with willing workers. In practice, it's mainly muggins here. Has Audrey left then? <laughs> she might as well have done for all the good she does. Do you know she was supposed to be in this morning? Phoned Alf up, said she had an upset stomach. Well, you know what that is, don't you? Hangover from celebrating Brian getting off. Oh, do you think so? I'm sure of it. Not that I mind her celebrating, I don't. It's just me having to carry the can. Well, I know how hard shop work can be when you're on your own. Oh, I'm sorry to mourn, Emily. I shouldn't pile it all on you. I, I think you were just the first friendly face. You'll feel brighter when you've had your lunch. Yeah, well, as soon as Alf comes back, I'm going, and I'll see to your order the first chance I get this afternoon. Oh, don't worry about it. Tomorrow will be all right, if necessary. Hello, Emily. Yeah. All right. Yes, I'm very well, thanks. Now, I mean it. If you've too much on your plate, tomorrow will be quite soon enough. What's all that about? Oh, it's just an order. I was supposed to do it this morning, but I didn't have a chance of being on my own. Hey, now. You're not often left on your own, are you? I'm back now, anyway. Yeah. Hey, we all have... for me dinner. Listen, we all have to muck in at times, you know, do a bit extra. Yes. All of us. Yeah, thank you. Can I sit again in there? Yeah, well, spring's a long way off, Betty. Maybe it's the beer. <laughs> if it was, it'd be affecting you and all. Oh, no, married men are immune. <laughs> well, I couldn't stop in there watching them any longer. Why didn't they tell me beer flat? Oh, go on, Betty. Give me devious Uncle Albert a rum. And I'll have another half in here, please. Oh, hello, love. I was beginning to think you weren't coming. So was I. Hey, what are you having? Uh, just a lager. Right. And a lager, please. Yeah. Have Deidre. Overworked, harassed, disgruntled. Oh, I. Everything normal. Yeah. One of those days, is it? Oh, I wouldn't care, love. There's getting to be too many of them. I mean, Audrey doesn't even pull her weight when she does come in, and Alf's that moonstruck he doesn't even notice. And if he does, he doesn't care. Honestly, I'm seriously thinking of chucking the job in. Your decision. I mean, why do it if you don't enjoy it? I yeah, used to enjoy it. It's not as if we need the money. Well, you know, I don't own with women working. I reckon a woman's place is in the old. Yeah, change to the gas stove just to be on the safe side, eh? Well, I know you had to work to keep yourself in Tracy, but I mean, once you marry Ken, I thought you'd chuck it. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's all a bit too much, love. I mean, it's a big enough job looking after Tracy and us two, isn't it? Do I neglect Tracy, or you, or Uncle Albert? Is the house a tip? Are you ever stuck for a clean shirt? No, of course not. All I'm saying is you don't have to work in the corner shop. No, what you're actually saying is that my job is just a way of keeping a little woman happy. You're condescending, and he's prehistoric. But you're both male shoving his pigs at heart. No, thank you very much, love, but I think I'll keep the job. Uh, sorry I'm late, Betty. I've been hanging about waiting for the car. Have you mushed up your feet, have you? No, I haven't been bad at all, love. It's been a couple of annoying Albert, though. Uh, how do you mean? I've been canoodling. I had a word with them, but they took not a blind bit of notice of me. Snogging in the snug, eh? I'll put pay to that hangabout. What's the matter? It's Debbie. Who's Debbie? Debbie, Eunice's daughter, my stepdaughter. Oh. 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 What are you doing here? Who's that? Oh, hiya, Fred. You don't know Jeff, do you? Well, he's sort of a friend, you know. So I've been here, then. Jeff, <coughs> this is me mum's fella. Husband. I'm Debbie's stepfather. Hiya. We thought we'd come round and find you in your new flat. Well, you weren't there, so we decided to come over here. Oh, it's nice to see you. What do you do? Not much. Not many jobs going around here, is there? Well, if Mum's out shopping, she'll be sure as she missed you. Yeah? Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll hang on for her. We've got nothing better to do, have we, Jeff? I, uh... Hello. What sort of a day have you had? Ah, uh, you know, usual. Further Middleton. In a good mood? Hello, there's a catch in that question. There's no there? catch, no. I just wanted to ask you something without getting shot at. Depends on what it is. Well, all right, I'll try anyway. Now, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> you what? You word. Now, just give us a straight answer to the question so I can get on with this letter to Santa Claus. It's still flipping November. I know, and then all of a sudden it's Boxing Day. That's why I'm doing my present list now. This Christmas is going to be different, so come on, what do you want? I don't know. Well, have a thing and tell me. Well, you know me, I don't usually bother with Christmas presents. I know, that's why every Christmas you end up with some aftershave, a couple of pairs of socks and three ankies in a box. Now, this year, you'll have something that you want and you'll enjoy it. Is that an order? Definitely. 
I've done everybody else's except you and Mavis. What about young John? John Spencer? Mm. Oh, yeah, why not? You don't think his mother will object if we give him a present? I don't see why she should. I mean, I don't know. Would you object if you were his mum? Don't ask me. If I were his mother, he wouldn't have needed foster parents. Gone quiet, hasn't it? Mm, call it a day if you like, love. You don't need to wait till six. No, it's all right. I'd better hang on. You might get a rush. Oh, tell you what I will do, though. I'll put the kettle on, make you a brew before I go. Oh, that's a good idea. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, love. Wow. You look fit and healthy. I am now. Oh, you're feeling better then? Right as rain. I shall be in tomorrow morning or bright and early. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Right, I'll go and put kettle on. Oh, don't bother for me, lovey. I'm not. Hey, listen, I don't want you coming back till you feel really better, you know. Oh, I'm fine, lovey, really. You know, all I need now to put me right back on top of the world is a good night out. <laughs> you know, I fancy the wrestling. It's such a laugh. What, you mean tonight? Oh, yes. Come on, Alfredo. Let's live a little. Oh, well, I can't really, love, you know. I mean, oh. I've got to look after the shop, you know. I mean, it's business. In... It's my livelihood. No, I can't really, love. Look, ask Deirdre. Oh. She'll do it for you. Yeah? I don't think so, love. I mean, she's been working all day, you know. Please yourself, but well, I feel like a night out, whether you do or not. Do you think I'll ring Arthur Wellsby? He's always mithering me to go out. Well, we can go out tomorrow night. Oh, well, I have to say, I mightn't feel like it tomorrow night. I might have all the commitments by then. Well, look, hang on, I'll, uh, I'll see. For... Sweet yourself, love. Right, kettle's on. Uh, Deirdre, love, how do you feel about uh, looking after the shop tonight? You're kidding. Oh, I don't mean straight away, like. I mean, go on and have your tea. But if you could be back for what? Um, Seven o'clock, I'd be very grateful. Oh, come on, Alf. I mean, it's been a long day, and it, well, it's not as if it's an emergency or anything, is it? Well, no, it isn't. I mean, he I'll... wants to take me out, lovey. Oh, come on, Deirdre. It's just for one night. After all, he is the boss, isn't he? You must take me for a right mug. Hey, now, that's enough of that. Is it? Well, I don't think it is. Because I'm just about sick and fed up of being the dog's body round here. I don't mind doing my share, but I'm damned if I'm going to do her share and your share as well. Hey, there's no need for that, love. No, there isn't, because I've finished. I'm packing the job in. Oh, dearie, come on, love. No, that's it. I've finished. <laughs> Remember me, I hope. George Carter off at market. Yes, of course I do. One scene never forgotten, eh? Can I come in a minute? Yeah, sure. Only I'd like a word with you. I called round this morning, but you must have been out. No, I've Thank just you. um just come home from work. Go sit down. You've been on stall, have you? Oh no, no. Um I work at Mount Baldwin's factory across the road. I do the odd day on the markets for him, that's all. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I was at Weatherfield last week, but I didn't see you. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I've been standing witness lately. I'm Warrington. Doing all right as well. Going to make it a regular stand. Uh, right, Elsie, I'll come straight to the... You don't mind me calling you Elsie, do you? Oh, of course I don't. Everybody else does. Call me a lot worse besides. The thing is, I've come to make you an offer. I've seen you looking after that store for Baldwin, and I think you do a damn good job. Well, thank you very much. No, you do. You do a grand job. And single-handed, like when your mate Vera were helping me. And I thought, Elsie's got what it takes. And you could work with her, I thought. Anyway, how about working for me? Oh, uh, on the markets? Yeah. Weatherfield and Salford, on the Warrington side. I know them. I do five markets a week and sometimes six. It's good money. I'll give you commission on top. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about it, really, you know. I'm just a novice, that's all. <laughs> You've got the knack. And you either have it or you haven't. You can always learn twiddly bits, but it's the knack. And you have that, Elsie. Is this the job you offered Vera by any chance, the one that she turned down? Well, I, basically, yes. And I'm glad she did, I know, because you're a better bet, a damn sight better bet. It's, it's not odds and sods I'm talking about, you know. It's a proper job. It stamp your cards and proper transport. Well, I don't know. It's hard work, isn't it? 
<laughs> certainly is. But so is sewing in that factory, isn't it? And you're on a three-day week there, yeah? You could soon be on a no-day week as well. Well, yes, I suppose that is that to it, yeah? Well, I know there's no as safe as houses anymore. Not even houses, but there'll always be markets and there'll always be market traders. And it's a good living. Are you interested? Yes, I am. I am interested, but I couldn't decide right now. I'd have to think about it, you know. Right, right. You do that, but have a cup of tea while you do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't have offered before, but you took the wind out of my sails. And while you're making it, I'll tell you what you want to know. Hey, it's not bad, this flat, is it? Mm. It's well better than my granddad's grotty old place. Do you know what? She always falls on her feet like that. Is there anything to drink? You know, any beer or anything? No, I've had a look. Can't see anything anyway. Jeffy! Oh. Hey, what is the prize? Oh. Oh. Don't tell me you're glad to see me. Of course I am, you little crackpot. Hey, who's this? Oh, this is Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, this is me, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Hello. A boyfriend. Sort of. Hey, I love the flat. Oh, it'll do. Until something better turns up. Did Freddie let you in? Well, we went over the pub before and he gave us the key. I wondered how you'd got in. Oh, I'm glad you came round, love. See a bit more of you now, eh? Oh, it was hopeless, wasn't it, at your granddad's? Him and Fred forever fratching. Oh, I know. <laughs> My granddad was telling me when I called on him the other day. Tell you what, ma'am, he was glad to see the back of that Fred. He got right off his oh, nose. Oh, right up. We won't go into that. Hey, are you eating enough? Bet you're not, are you? Of course I am. Well, I bet you're hungry. Come on, we'll make something to eat. Oh, no, we've had something. I had to look in the fridge before. Was all right, wasn't it? Of course it was. You must make yourself a talk now, love. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the kettle on, cos I could murder a cuppa. Right. Then we'll sit down and have a nice long chat, eh? I wouldn't go back, not even if he begged me. Well, that's what you want. I wouldn't have the job if it was thrown at me. Well, if you've had enough of it, like I say, fine. Uh, as long as you're not cutting off your nose to spite your face. What do you mean? Look, love, if you like working in the corner shop for Alvin, this is just a storm in a teacup. Don't stand on your dignity if you're the one that's going to get hurt. Look, this dinner you were saying I should chuck the job in. Now you're saying I should go crawling? No, no, I'm not saying any such thing. I'm simply saying don't go and do something you don't really want to do in a fit of pique or because somebody's hurt your feelings. Look, love. Whatever you decide, so long as it's what you really want, then that's fine by me. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Sorry to be so touchy. It's just that she's one of those women who thinks she can roll her eyes and fellas will jump through hoops. The annoying thing is, and in Alf's case, it's true. <laughs> On the mark! Every day of the week, you mean? Well, I'd have me Sundays off. Oh, I reckon you'd need Elsie. I can just see you behind the market stall on a bit of sacking with the wind and the rain oh, just howling round yeah, you. Yeah, keep me schoolgirl complexion in good <laughs> nick, I'll say that. Are you really going to do it? Uh, well, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. The money would be good. And they're a nice crowd, the market crowd, you know. They're always good for a laugh and they're never slow to put their hands down. What's this boss like? I mean, uh, is he tasty? Well, he's really not mad looking because if he... Oh, hang on. Here Leave he comes it. now. The last scotch and give Elsie a gin and tonic. I don't park it out then. Get away. <coughs> Oh, uh, this is my friend, Audrey Potter. Audrey, this is George Carter. I've just been hearing all about you. Oh, good, I hope. <laughs> that gin, is it? Oh, thank you very much. Another large one, mate. Oh, I don't know. Friend of Elsie's, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, she's my lodger at the moment. Right, little treasure house of talent. Well, uh, that it? <laughs> right then, Elsie. How about it? Oh, now, don't rush me. Don't rush me. I have to have time to think it over, you know. Elsie's just been telling me all about your offer. Uh, sounds a bit of all right to me. It is, love. It is. It's a great life. I've decided. I've decided I'll have to sleep on it. OK, love, OK. You do that. But I want to use her to know pretty quick. I just can't afford to hang about. 
Here, have that last slice of ham, Jeff. Oh, darn. Any more tea left, ma'am? Hmm. I think I can squeeze another cup. <laughs> I'm all up. Glad to be in all. Oh, hello, Fred. Oh, stay there, then. Uh, uh, put the kettle on them while you're on your feet. Not just I'm a bit peckish. I could uh, do with a quick butty, though, love. Oh, Jeff's just had the last slice of boiled ham. Oh. Oh, I don't think there is anything, love. I thought you'd have something to eat down at the pub. While I get down there, there's a load of aggravation in it. Uh, what time are you going, Debbie? Last bus goes in five minutes, you know. Oh, heck, is it that time? Come on, love, get your skates on. You wouldn't chuck us out, ma'am, would you? Not you and all. What do you mean? Well, we hoped you'd let us stay. The two of you, you mean? What, what do you mean, Debbie? Not you and all. Have you had a row with your dad? Well, he just went all kind of funny, like, didn't he, Jeff? He went stark revving bonkers. Around the twist, if you ask me. Yeah, and he was really nasty to Jeff. Anyway, ma'am, I'm not going back there. I'd rather sleep her off. Oh, no, no, Debbie, no. It's, uh, it's not on, no. Oh, Sorry, give over, not... Fred. She'll have to stay, won't she? We've only got one bed, Eunice, haven't we? Look, we've only just moved in. We haven't got a bed for the spare room yet. You could stop here with pleasure, apart from Look, that. Look, she but I mean, is you know staying, me. and that's settled. And Jeff can stay too, can't he, ma'am? Because if you chuck him out, I'm going as well. Nobody's chucking anybody out. Well, look, Fred, Debbie can sleep with me, and... and eh? Well, you two will have to keep down here best you can. There's the settee and the easy chair. Oh, give over. That's Oshie for the settee. Well, you lock up, then. Yeah, you go up, Luke. Who the hell's that? It's a bit late, isn't it? All right. You've not seen no, John, no, have you? No, come in, go in. Go in. Oh, God. It's John's man. Nothing's happened to him, has it? Came home from school this afternoon, bit after, just took off. I've not seen sight and sound of him since. He didn't come in for his tea. Well, I just thought he might have come round here. No, he's not been here, love. Oh, I could kill him worrying me like this. What made you think he might come here? I don't know. Well, he just uh, talks about you a lot, you know. Well, perhaps you should go to police. <laughs> no fear, I don't want them involved. Well, look, it's only quarter past eleven. Or you'll probably be there when you get back. We'll give him what for. Well, sorry to have bothered you. Oh, it's just I had a feeling, you know, he might come round here. He was a bit upset, you see. Been giving cheat, you know, and uh, had to speak to him, and then Bill had to speak to him and all. Well, I'll best get back. Sorry to have bothered you. Uh -huh. I hope you soon will find him. I dare say he'll come back when he wants something to eat. <laughs> Night. Yeah, ta-da. We'll let you know. Yeah, thanks. Oh, come on. Oh. Suppose that Bill's her boyfriend. Sounds like it, doesn't it? Then you don't think anything's happened to him, do you? No, I don't. He's probably out late with that punk friend of his, you know. Yeah, I hope so. Now, don't worry. Can't help it, can you? So, what's up? It's 25 past seven. Well? Just think, in case you wanted to get up. Oh, give over, get up. I've only just got to sleep. Oh! I think I broke my flipping neck. Oh, God. Do I have to get out to work or anything? <sighs> no, I don't. Shut up. Get your head down. Get some kip, will you? Might as well get up, really. Oh. Oh. What do you say I put the kettle on? Go on. Where do you keep the tea in this place? It's in the cupboard next to the coker. It's in a tin, Mark T. <laughs> well, would you rather have coffee? Oh, flaming no, a tea. trying to sleep. Oh, why? Why not? You want to hear it? <laughs> hey, not those cops. They're my mum's best. Oh. Hey, get it off, will you? What's the matter? Don't you like a nice bit of music of a morning? Off, I said. Off! Oh.
Coming right down. That lad's back home. He's bound to be. You do daft things, you know, kids. Like disappearing. No point in you start worrying now. Anything could have happened to him. He was probably home when she got back there last night. It wasn't all that late, you know. Oh, come <coughs> off it. We're going up to midnight when she left here. Kids don't think that's late nowadays. Well, I don't think it would stayed out. Missed his tea and everything. I don't, without a good reason. Kids have all sorts of reasons nowadays. Did you never run away from home? Of course, I did many a time. Never gone more than a couple of hours. Yeah, I used to run away from home and all. I used to get the tram down the pier then. That was the only place I could think of, really. I went over the water to Birkenhead once on the ferry. Now, that really is running away, you know, over the water. Well, kids just don't go for a ride on a bus these days, you know. They hitch a, a lift down the flaming motorway. They could be anywhere in no time. London. And they don't know, do they? They don't know the terrible things that can happen to them. You do. And you're conjuring up all sorts of things in your mind, aren't you? And there's probably no need to. Will you go round there this morning and find out? Give us a ring at the cabin. Yeah, of course I will, yeah. <laughs> He's probably just tucked up in bed. See why Deirdre went storming off like that. Just as she hadn't. Makes me feel very guilty about everything. Apart from anything else, I'm more or less obligated, aren't I? To be honest, Elsie, I don't want to go in the shop every day. I'll get out to go round. That's the best thing. To go round and see her. To crawl. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, don't drag me into it. Hey, what are you going to tell your fella when he comes round? My fella? My fella? A chap in the market. He's not my fella. I don't know what you mean by that. What I mean is, well, I mean, he offered you a job, didn't he? And that is all. Well, what do you think? I think it'll be very cold on the markets these mornings. Well, I bet there's a bit of money in it. I mean, they're worth quite a bit, aren't they, them markets? No fellas? doubt it's because they hold on to it. Well, what are you going to tell him? Well, I don't know, do I? Well, I thought you quite enjoyed it before on the stall. Like you enjoy working for Alf. Day in, day out, and at least you don't get rained on. Well, if you fancy it, I bet he'll take you on. You know, I could quite fancy that. Seeing different places every day, that'd be good. Cos, you know, the longer I stay in any one place, things always start to get complicated, whether I want them to or not. Meaning you and Alf like? Meaning me and everything like. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you start building things up in your mind. I'll get over there and I'll give you a ring, eh? You'll be in the cabin. Yeah. Maybe this will kill me. You left a window open upstairs. I shouldn't think so, no. Thought I heard something banging. Any road, you'll give me a ring, won't you? Yeah, as soon as I get there. Charles. Yeah. Hello. Len. Somebody upstairs. Good God. What time is it? We've got a visitor. Oh, love. Where have you been? Upstairs in bed. You've been upstairs here? Since when? Last night. You've been here all night? When did you let yourself in? Didn't. Doors opened, but you were out, so I waited. I just went upstairs, it all still the same bedroom, and I fell asleep. John, your mother's going out of her mind. She was round here last night. Didn't you hear her? No. Well, she's worried to death they about you. John, she is worried to death about you. They just argue and argue. So you ran away, did you? Well, your mum ran after you, so she must think something of you. But he didn't come after me. Who's he? She says call him Uncle Bill, but he's not. Well, he was probably out somewhere else looking for you. Oh, John, you shouldn't do it, you know. I mean, she was in hell of a state. Did you think you could stop here? You know we can't let you. You know that, don't you? We're a bit of trouble. Well, I hope not, for your sake. Mind you, you deserve a good... Still, you know that, don't you? I'd better get him home, hadn't I? Up everyone's misery. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, did you have out to eat last night? Sit yourself down, you must be starving. I better get him back. Well, um. You 
get round and tell his mother as soon as you can, but I think the best thing is to get her round here. I think she'd prefer me to take the kid round there, though. Well, maybe. Then again, state of mind she might be in. Perhaps she'd prefer to just cope with one thing at a time, like the fact that he's all right. Then she can, uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Do you think he was really asleep upstairs when she came last night? I prefer to think so. <laughs> right, Spiderman. Come on, let's feed you. Well, if you don't want to stop at your dad's, what do you want to do? Well, you know. No, I don't know. Do you want to stop here? Well, I'm not saying that, but... Well, I mean, you can always stop here if you've nowhere else, can't she, Fred? Uh... Thanks, ma'am. Oh, Debbie, it's time you started making some plans. What kind of plans? Just plans you can't go wafting on all through your life. I mean, this lad, for instance. Well, where is he? Well, he's gone to sign on. How long have you known him? A while. And what kind of plans has he got? Well, he's going to be a rock and roll superstar. I'm talking about proper plans. Well, somebody's got to be a rock and roll superstar. Why not, Jack? Oh, that's all nonsense, is that? I'm talking about the real world that we've all got to live in. Yeah, well, you can't even get jobs in the real world. So what's the use of making all these wonderful plans? Well, what's he got going for him? Well, he's nice. Apart from that, has he any qualifications? Yeah, he's got three CSEs. Well, I didn't think he was Einstein to look at him. Well, it's better than nothing, which is what I've got, and you. And him. Don't be cheeky. They didn't have CSEs when we were young, did they, Fred? Nobody had jobs going for them, didn't they? There's jobs going now, only they need more than three CSEs to get them. Oh, there's people got degrees out of university, can't even get jobs. It's because they haven't got what matters, in it. They haven't got gumption. Yeah, whatever that is. It means getting off your backside and doing something. Half these kids' unemployment's only an excuse that, well, they'd rather be on the door. Will you stop it? Will you stop arguing? Well, oh, that's well. not fair, that. Jeff's got a lot going for him. And he hates being on the do. I said, will you stop it? Anyway, at least his teeth aren't green. <laughs> Not like that last lad you dragged home. <laughs> hey, are you keen on him? He's all right. Well, are you? Of course I am. He wouldn't be here, would he? And how serious is he? <laughs> Nobody's serious, ma'am. It's not like that. All oh, right, all right. I only asked. Well, where does he live? Well, till the end of the week, he's living at Eric's. Only Eric's getting thrown out, so he's got nowhere to go. Hasn't he got any family? Oh, yeah. It was his dad that threw him out. What for? Because of him doing his drumming. Oh, drumming. But he's going to be homeless and he's not worried. Not especially. Now it seems to worry them. Uh, be fair, Fred. I mean, you hardly know the lad. I hardly know his old fella either, but... I mean, I, I can see his point of view. Well, you can see for yourself. He's fine. What do you want to do a thing like that for? Come here to me. <laughs> you mustn't do that ever again. You mustn't, do you hear me? Sorry, man. You all right? Oh, I'm so glad you're all right. I'm so glad you're all right. So, now, don't you ever, ever, ever... He's had a good breakfast inside him, End the road. <laughs> Mr. Fairclough says you were here all night, is that right? And they never knew. <laughs> you are a mystery. <laughs> He's funny sometimes, you know. Well, I don't know about funny. He's obviously not very happy. He's a very happy lad, really. He was just upset. Upset about something, weren't you? Knew you were. We just have to have a chat, you, me, and Uncle Bill. Why does it have to be Uncle because Bill? Because Uncle Bill cares no, about you. No, he doesn't. Johnny. He does, Johnny, does. Come on, let's get you home. This isn't your cardigan. It's Len's. He only had his blazer, it were wet. Keep it on him if you like. He'll do any time. No, it's all right, thank you. If his blazer's dry. It's dry. Come on, then. Let's be having you. OK, I'll give you a lift home, then, eh? No, it's all right, thank you. No, it's no trouble. No, you've been troubled enough. Honestly. Look, I would sooner take him on the bus. We'll be all right on the bus. OK, if you'd sooner. Yes, I would sooner. Come on, John. And, uh, I'm sorry about all this Don't trouble. Don't mention it. Bye. Come on, you can say you're sorry and all. Don't worry about it, John. Thanks for leaving me pictures up. Come on. Look, he is sure. I'm positive, thanks. It's only at the end of the street, the bus. All right. 
Zarabiam. That's funny, that, you know. She wouldn't let me take them home. Well, she must feel very awkward. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Your kids aren't supposed to run away to other people, strangers. Embarrassing when they do. I can understand it. Well, then there's Uncle Bill when he's at home. He's who you'd think. He's a fella, on and off. And he's the cause of it, eh? Did he manage to get a little talk with John? Well, couldn't get much out of him. They row. Then again, who doesn't? You never know how kids see things, do you? Not very happy, is he? What the hell can we do? Now? What do we do if he comes again? Because I don't know which will be worse. If he never comes again, or if he does. Because you can bet they'll tell him never to set foot in here again. I bought your loaf. Oh, hello. Hello, love. You need to bother, love. I was going to do a bit of shopping myself. No, well, actually, I felt like getting out of the shop for a bit, really. What with one thing and another. Uh... Ah, well, uh, if you two are talking, I won't bother you. It's all right, we've finished talking. Oh, will Well, I reckon you could talk down the man in the moon, but uh, really, I don't fancy it, thanks. So you're definitely not going on the market, then? She's turned down an offer, not offered to many. Oh, well, it's not just the varicas, veins, it's the moving all over the place, here and there. No, thanks, it's not me. You know, I'd have thought you'd have been a gypsy. Well, I used to think so at one time, but now, tar but no tar. I quite like the idea of going different places every day. But it's not different places, really. It's all the same. It's getting in the van, getting out of the van, going home in the van, same people on, not me, not well, Compared to being stuck in the shop, at least you see different people. I couldn't take you out of the shop, could I? Oh, you could be catching me on a very weak moment. Well, I said it wasn't offered to many, but it, if you're interested... Now, don't. Right. My belly thinks my throat's cut. <laughs> Come on, I'll talk to you over a glass. No, I can't. I've only just popped out. I can't. Can I? 15-2, 15-4, and two for the pair, that's six. And that's true, I'm drinking off you. 15-8. Oh. Do you know, you're one mean crib player, Albert. No, no, I'm not mean. I mean, it's the rules. If you can't bother to count. Oh, I don't mean mean, mean, mean. I mean, like mean, you know, red hot. Well, since men is mean, men red hot. That's just something they say, isn't it? Well, it's not what I'm saying. If I call you mean, I mean you're tight-fisted. Yeah, but it's what the Yanks say, isn't it? The Yanks? Well, they never make, make sense any road. You ought to expect that. What were we playing for? Well, I'll have a room. Room, Fred. You're entitled to half an hour for your dinner. Oh, no, lovey, I can't stop for me dinner. Of course you can. Honestly. Who's that she's with? Not that I expect you to know. You're right, I don't. I wonder if Alf does. Honestly, he's smitten with me, he is. It's pathetic. So you keep saying. Well, it is. It's that wet, it's embarrassing. It's one of the reasons I couldn't carry on working there. Oh, uh, lovely, would you just excuse me just a minute? Uh, dear Jim, I just want to say I'm really sorry about everything. Honestly, I'm, I feel awful. Well, there's no need to, I don't. No, well, come on, you made it pretty obvious you felt put out. I don't feel put out. Well, put upon then. I do understand how you feel, Deirdre. I mean, I think we were a bit thoughtless. And I'm sure Alf knows all this as well. Do you know, I think if you was just to go and see him, well, everything would be all right. What? You'd be back just like it was? Well, I don't no, know. No, no, Audrey. I appreciate what you're saying, and it's, it's very nice of you, but I've got no intention of going on being used as a dish rag, and you can tell him that. Any road I've spoken, eh? Hello, Ken. My word, I'm still here. Beginning to think I was invisible. Tough is a touchy. Me, can Listen, what are we going to get Uncle Albert for a Christmas present? You want me to tell you all about the job, then? I would love you to tell me all about the job. Well, it's not a bad time to come into it, because when there's no cash about, all the people come in the market looking for something that's cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing twice now what I was doing a couple of years ago. That's why I need somebody. Now, look, this is what's involved. I don't think I can explain this, but, well, if I were to leave now, I think my name would be taken in vain. You have no idea. No, I couldn't possibly. It's the wrong time. I mean, no way could I just... Well, you know. Well, no hard feelings. Oh, no. Cheers. Cheers. Still, uh, looking ahead, you weren't going to tell me what was involved. Oh, God, I should have phoned Mavis. 
By the time I've picked up my stuff, it won't be worth turning in. It is Mavis. Come here. Oh, you do remember who I am, then? I'm just on my way, love. Oh, not to the cabin by any chance. Honestly, uh, we've had a morning. Yes, well, I've had a morning of it as well. Do you realise I've been on my own there ever since papers? And not a peep have I heard out of anybody. I mean, well, I didn't know if you were alive or dead or what. You won't believe me if I told you, so come no, in. Well, very likely not. But I hope you believe me when I tell you that Mavis is very oh, tired of it. Yes, well, I mean, it's not even a phone call. Look, you're not even listening to me. It's uh, John's mum again. And uh, Uncle Bill. Hi. Uh, well, what? Well, yeah, well, I'm not satisfied about last night. I'm not at all satisfied. Uh, I don't think I know what you mean. I mean, I'm not satisfied. Look, I don't know where you fit into this or what the hell you're talking about. But don't come into my house starting with that tone. Hang on. What's to do? You don't know, eh? No, we don't know. Well, let me spell it out for you, then, because there's a word for it. And the word is enticing. You what? And that's the legal word for it and all. If you don't know what it means, you can ask a lawyer. You might talking in plain English. What are you talking about? <sighs> You've even got his photograph, eh? <laughs> See? I'm talking about this lad. This lad, what you've enticed away from his own mother and away from his own home. Enticed. That's the word I used. I think you'd better leave. Uh, well, hang on. Where do you get this idea from? <sighs> We're not daft, you know. The minute she told me, I said, that's a load of cock and bull. What is? You trying to tell me you had that lad here all last night and you never knew? Well, that's the truth. Aye. And you've taught him to say the same, haven't you? If he's saying the same, he's telling you the truth. What well, time were you last night, Sylvia? Well, I, I don't know, but it, it was very late. Ah, it was late. She was sick and worried out of her mind. And you had that lad upstairs all the time. We didn't know he was there. We didn't. He let himself in. I mean, we hardly ever locked that back door. Look, I don't care whether the door was locked or unlocked. I've told the lad he's never to set foot in this house again. Look, I don't know where you fit into this or what the hell you're talking about, but you're very fond of laying down the law, aren't you? Well, I am laying down the law. That lad is not setting foot in this house again. Just a minute, you. Isn't it time you started looking at this from his point of view? Ask yourself why he wants to come here, why he ran away from home in he's the first place. He's always been happy at home before. He's never run away before. Well, perhaps something's changed then, has he? Aye. Somebody's took advantage because Sylvia had to go into hospital. We looked after him. And where the hell were you then? I don't know, Bill. Maybe they didn't know. <sighs> it's as clear as the nose on your face. They've no kids of their own, so what do they do? They try to get somebody else's. They don't care. They probably can't have kids. They've gone funny in the head. Just ben, don't, don't, me. don't. They're upset, Len. Leave them. Just out. Don't worry, we're going. As long as you've got the idea. Any more of it, and it's the law. And don't think they won't hear about this up at the fostering. I'm oh, sorry, Len. Well, I wouldn't have said anything before. No wonder that kid can't stand him. What'll happen if he does go to council about all that? Well, it depends on whether they believe him or not, doesn't it? But even if they only half believe him, it means a load of trouble for us. Well, what kind of place is it, then? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, oh, that's Eric's. Oh, come on, Debbie. If it was a dress, you'd describe it to the last stage. I mean, this is somewhere you're going to be living. Well, it's a room. And it's got a kitchen. Hey, and it's just off Rosamond Street, you know, by the traffic lights. Yes. It's handy, that. She's been lucky there. Well, mind you, it needs doing up a bit, like. Oh, lick of paint works wonders. You need more than a lick of paint. What about your mod comms? Well, it's got a toilet. Yeah, oh, I am glad. Hey, oh, that's Eric. Will you stop doing that for a minute and tell me? Well, is it furnished? Well, it's supposed to be, sort of. Mind you, it's not up to much like. Oh, you don't mind a bit of discomfort when you're young. I think you fell on your feet. Well, well has it got a bath or anything? Um, do you know, I don't think it has. Jeff, Jeff, has it got a bath? No, yeah, I didn't say one. No bath? Well, I don't know. I mean, you can't manage without a bath, not in this day and age. Well, it's not very far away, and you've got a bath, haven't you? Oh, and your hot water's free after central heating? No, it is not free. Oh, all right. We'll give you something towards oh, thank it. Thank you very much. Well, well, who's we? Me and Jeff. Well, hasn't Jeff got a bath where he's living either? Don't be daft, ma'am. Oh. 
Oh, I see. Well, I couldn't afford it on my own. So you're not only going to live in squalor, you're going to go the whole hog, you're going to live in sin as well. Oh, man. Look, this morning you said to me you weren't serious. Well, no, what you mean by serious? I don't think you know what serious is. I don't think you've got a serious idea in your head. Well, if you think for... Fred, have you heard this? Well, it's not considered out of the way these days. What? Over my dead body. Well, I'm 18, I am. I don't care. Well, look, I've got to live somewhere and I am not going back to my dad. No, you are not. You're stopping here. I mean, you, Jeff, you can go and find somewhere else, but you are staying here with your mother. Well, Fred doesn't want me to stay here. But is that right, Fred? You'd make me turn out my own flesh and blood. Now, listen to me, young man. If you want to sweep her off to live in sweet, without even a bath, well, you're going to have to put a ring on her finger first. But until then, she stops here with me. Well, isn't that right, Fred? Be a proper little happy family, it will. Time you got yourself up off your fat behind, lady. This is not fat. Yeah, and don't get marmalade on Freddie's paper. Do you have to go on, ma'am? Look, if you're going to stop here, there are one or two things we've got to get sorted out. Well, it wasn't my idea to stop here, was it? Not going into all that again. But look, no, look, but I... I'm not having a daughter of mine living over the brush with her boyfriend, and that is final. Well, he doesn't want me stopping here. He has got a name. Fred. <sighs> well, what's he been saying? Well, he hasn't been saying anything, has he? He doesn't have to. Oh, look, love, I know it's not easy for any of us, is it? I mean, this isn't exactly Windsor Castle, is it? So why don't I just leave you both to it? I'll move in with Jeff. No, and that's final. Now, if you've finished stuffing your face, will you go and get some clothes on? Oh, God. Why didn't you wake us? Well, I was letting you have a lie in. I thought you should do you good. <laughs> lie in? With all that racket going on. What racket? Oh, you and God's gift to the doll crew there. I can't have a chat with my own daughter. Chat? <laughs> it's quiet at the Stretford end. You know, I think that's one of the reasons I married you. What is? So I could look at your happy, smiling face at breakfast. Something to bring a bit of sunshine into my life. Up there all morning. I'm coming, aren't I? Oh, so you finally surfaced, have you? You make us sound like the Loch Ness monster or something. Have you looked in the mirror this morning? Oh my God, is that me? I'm afraid so. Well, I did have a bit of a late night, I suppose. Bit of a late night? You came home with the milk. No, I didn't. I tripped over the bottles as I come in. No need to ask you for a good night. We went to this little place just off the Nutsford Road. Do you know, I don't think they'd heard of licensing hours. I think we'd still be there now if uh, Alf hadn't had this sudden thought. Oh, I. Well, at about 2.30, the place was nearly empty, you know. The lights were down and he suddenly came out with it just like that. Well, go on. What did he say? He said, uh, I've got to be up at 7.30 for the bread man. <laughs> Jack beggar. <laughs> it's still warm. Yeah, it might need a bit of help out of the pot. It's weak. Oh, it'll do. Uh, is there out for me there? No. Nope. That's a relief. I saw that letter heading solicitors. I thought, hello, now what have I been up to? Oh, more to the point, who with? Exactly. <laughs> no, it's uh, now like that. It's just somebody's died and they're winding up the estate. Don't tell me you've been left... A manor house and a deer park in the Cotswolds. Oh, yes, yes, all of that. They want to know if I want to buy my ground rent. Oh, are you going to? No. Well, it's not a lot, 48 quid. Well, how can I? It's a lot if you haven't got it, isn't it? Well, you soon <coughs> would have it if you gave up this lark. <coughs> and you'd be saving someone else other than money by the sound of Yeah, you can, you can talk. I'm not as bad as you. I don't wake up with one in my mouth. No. Anyway, look, if you were, the amount that you smoke, if you were to give it up, you could have paid for this, say, in uh, six weeks. Yes. And I gave up drinking. I could give it up in half the time and pay for it, couldn't I? Now, what's the point anyway? I wouldn't need the house then, would I? I'd be right round the twist. You're not going already. I have to. I have to be behind my machine in five minutes. And besides, I haven't got a boss that keeps me out half the night, have I? You know, you are slipping, Elsa. Don't remind us. <laughs> Mm. 
Hey, turn that thing down, Debbie. You can hear it right at the other end of the hall. They could do it a bit alive enough anyway. Honest, that Barlow? Mr. Barlow to you. Now, will you turn it down? Oh, that's great, isn't it? Can't even have a bit of music in your own home. I said turn it down, not turn it off. Look, we've got to think about folk using the hall. And what about the folk living here? Aren't they entitled to some consideration and all? I don't suppose you put the kettle on. No. Hey, do you think that room looks all right? Yeah, as right as it will ever be. Yeah. Hey, don't put that away. There's a pile of ironing needs doing. Oh, all right, then. I'll leave it out for you. I didn't mean that. I thought you could do it. Well, I haven't got the time, have I? Debbie, you've more time than the town hall clock. I haven't, ma'am. Honest, I promised Jeff I'd ring him this morning. Oh, forget it. I'll try and do it this afternoon. I mean, I don't know how you got into this in the first place. You know how we got into it. Councillor Roberts put a word in the right places. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean you and Fearless Freddy. His name's Fred. Oh, look at you, ma'am. Is this what you dreamed about? Being a glorified skivvy? Living in a rabbit hutch? Look, we can't all dream of being pop stars, Debbie. We can't hide ourselves away in a little dream world, sponging off everybody else. At least Fred and I are doing a job of work to keep a roof over our heads, which is more than I can say for some people. Well, I've got ambition, I have. And if this is what life's got to offer me, then I'm afraid I don't want to know. No, you don't. And that's the trouble with kids today. Listen, there's nothing wrong with ambition, ma'am. And if you want to know where I got that from, it wasn't from no kids. It was from you. Oh, yeah. You were the one who's going to be queen of your own castle, remember? That's how you always seen it. Right up to the time you married Mr. Wonderful. Anyway, I'm going to get changed. I think you'd better. Jimmy, pocket. Hey, come here. I don't want to show you something. I'm trying to get you dinner. I won't keep you long. What for? I told him. I want to show you something. See that? You dragged me out here to look at that. Yeah. It's ours. It's what? It's ours. I've bought it. I've signed it up. I heard it was up for sale about a couple of weeks ago, when they were going through Wormo's estate. Oh, well, that's terrific. I mean, that's where I've always wanted, a dirty big gap between two terraced houses. That's an investment. All building plots are an investment. I see. And this is ours? That's right. Bye, we're really in the big time now, aren't we? Do you want gravy on your sausage and mash or what? Eh? Yeah. Right, well, when you've finished surveying your kingdom, your dinner will be on the table in five minutes. Fred. Can't you get it yourself? Well, you're nearer to it than I am. What did your last one die of, Betty? <laughs> He's a right little bundle of fun today, isn't he? Oh, I think it's that girl of Eunice's that's getting him down. Oh, she seems all right to me, you know, just the thousands of other kids of her age. But that's the trouble, isn't it? Fred's not her age. Hey, it's a not... long time since you wasn't over. <laughs> he's not on his own, though, look, you know. No. <laughs> Have you had any luck, Mr. Tilt? What, with Eunice's daughter, you mean? <laughs> no, I mean finding a job. Oh, that sort of look. No love, only the usual kind. Bad luck, you know. Do you know something? I've been reckoning up. And since I've been out of work, I've applied for 60 jobs. 60? Would you believe that? So if anybody wants to say, don't worry, Bert, you know, someone will turn up, I wouldn't bother if I were them. All right, well, I'd better be getting back. Do you know, I used to pray for the day I'd be saying that. But I reckon if I did get a job, I don't think I'd go out at dinner time. Just in case the firm closed down behind me while my back was turned. Uh. Uh, I'll see you then. Bye, mate. Oh, hello, Ken. Are you looking for me? Well, I was hoping to find out Roberts. Found him. Thanks. I'll be seeing you. So, this is where you hide yourself. Hello, Ben. Don't often see you around here. What's wrong with the ale in your place? Gone off, has it? There's nothing wrong with the ale, but my place, Ben, as you and a few more of our council colleagues well know. Oh, that's right enough. What does bring you around here, then? About a complaint about the community centre. Oh, that's Kimbala's problem, isn't it, surely? Not this one. Do you happen to know a Mrs. Beswick? 
Says I do. She's chairperson of the Weatherfield Ladies Guild. Oh, I am on. Yes, I do know her. Hefty lady. Built like a prop forward. Laughs like horse. <laughs> That's her. Well, she had a dust-up down there with this fella you put in with his missus uh, while I was away. Fred G? That's the one. And as you were responsible for putting him in there, I thought I'd have a word with you before I saw him. Yeah, right, right. But why you? I mean, if they're going to send the chairman of the social service committee around here, every time there's a difference of opinion, there won't be enough hours in the day. This one's different, Alf. It wasn't just a difference of opinion. It was a right dust-up from what I've heard. That'd be bad enough, mate. But Mrs. Bedick happens to be town clerk's sister-in-law into the bargain. <laughs> Your Mr. G can't half pick a mouth. <laughs> on till you finished with it. No, you're all right, love. I'll drop the latch for a couple of minutes. If you say so. I'll see you later, then. Aye, all right. Ta-da. <clears throat> we'll not be disturbing here. We couldn't talk in the Rovers, not with Fred, dear. No. Would you uh, like a cup of tea? Coffee? Somewhat a bit stronger? No, thanks, Alf. Not for me. But don't let me stop you. No, no, I'm fine. Right, er... Uh... What's G been up to then? Well, the way Mrs. Beswick tells it, she had the room booked for her ladies' guild meeting, and when they arrived, it wasn't ready. The chairs hadn't been put out. The tables hadn't been put out. It hadn't been cleaned up since the last group. They just weren't expected. Well, it happens. I know. And in ten minutes, it could all have been put right. Unfortunately, the only person there was G, and he wasn't exactly cooperative. Oh, I see. And he rode. It all got a bit heated, and G sent Mrs. Beswick packing with a flea in her ear in front of her precious ladies. Well, in fairness to Fred, he's not actually the uh, caretaker, you know. Eunice, his wife, is. I mean, Fred just helps out as and when like. Well, he wasn't very helpful on this occasion, was he? And it's put me right on the spot, Alva, I can tell you. Here am I, supposed to be responsible for G and his missus, and I've never even met him. It was you who put him in there. Yeah, well, we have to get somebody in quickly, haven't we? So you say. But I can't see why it was so urgent. It couldn't wait till I got back from holiday. Well, it was in our best interest to get somebody in, you know. I mean, you haven't forgotten the trouble we had with the vandals when that flat was empty. Eunice and Fred seemed ideal. Anyway, what are we going to do about it? I'll go down and have a little chat with them. Put myself in the picture. Oh, though I think I'd better leave it till tomorrow now. I've got a meeting at half past three. Oh, well, do you want me to go with you? Uh, when you go see them, I mean. I think you'd better leave this with me, Alf. Don't worry. I won't barge in there and scare the pants off them. I'll have a chat with them. Give them a little reprimand over this Mrs. Beswick business so I can go back and tell the town clerk something. Oh, and while I'm there, I'll just make sure there aren't any more questions I can't answer. Oh. Hello, love. Hello, love. We just popped out for a change of scenery for ten minutes. Ah, uh, share it, please. Yeah. And I'll have half a bit of I should have thought if you felt the need for a drop of fresh air, the answer was obvious. Take a walk. I have. Over here. I was thinking of a little bit further. Oh, yeah? Like off the edge of South Fork here? I was thinking about the job centre. I went yesterday, didn't I? Look, there's no law to say you can't go again today, is there? She'll go tomorrow, won't you, love? If I've got the time. Yes, you will. Now, for your kids don't want jobs, you just want to sit in your backsides and bleat about unemployment. You're not prepared to go and look for a job, are you? I have looked. I've looked till I'm sick of looking. And if you think we don't want work, you want to take a look down the job centre sometime, don't you? I'd look myself if I wanted a job as a Concord pilot or a brain surgeon. Stop it, would you just stop it? They've come up with a card game based on that lot, you know. Happy families, it's called. Ooh, Fred can be very cutting, you know, in the mood takes him. Well, he's a fella, isn't he? They think they know it's all. Yeah. OK, Doc. Give it a rest, will you? Len, there's a world of difference in laying out a few hundred quid for an investment in the future and chucking good money after bad. Look, I'm building one little house, not a whole development like Eaton Park. Which you're hoping to sell and make a couple of thousand on. Going to sell. Where are you going to get the money to build it in the first place? Look, I'm not stupid, you know. I can do a fair bit myself. I've got plenty of contacts. Who want pay when they do the jobs, not when you sell the house. You're going to have to lay out thousands of pounds before you get so much as a penny piece back. I didn't start in this business yesterday. I know what I'm doing. I hope you do, for both our sakes. And well, what will Kelsey say? Or is it going to be a lovely little surprise for them as well? I told him. I wasn't going to tell anybody until the whole thing was sewn up. Well, don't worry. They'll have their say. Oh, they'll do that all right. 
bank on it. So, what did Ben Critchley want, then? It's not like him to honour us with his presence. Well, something or nothing, wasn't it? There'd been a row down at the centre between Fred and one of the women. Oh, yeah, I heard, I heard. But why send Ben Critchley? Well, he sent himself, didn't he? I think he wanted to be put in the picture. What about? Well, uh, by rights, he should have been informed when Eunice and Fred went in there, you know. Oh, I see. He wanted to know if it had gone through the proper channels. Well, he didn't say so in so many words. <laughs> Councillors never do. You're satisfied that it did, I take it? Look, Ken, I've got nothing to hide. Everything I did was fair and square and above board. Good. You've got nothing to worry about, then, have you? Oh. Hello. Albert? Uh, it's not you I want. Well, who do you want, then? I want to see that young lady of yours. If you mean Audrey, why don't you say so? Well, I do. Well, can I see her at counter? No, you can't. She's having a dinner. Well, till now, it's be three o'clock. Not the idea to get away with that, can you? Look, Albert, she's not here, and that's that. Now, is there anything I can do or not? Not unless you can cut air. Why, John, it's nice to be some folk, isn't it? Like who, Mr. Teller? Well, like you. You have to do dinner time now. Well, I'm sure that there's nothing that Alf couldn't cope with. He can't cut air. Oh, I'm with you. You want your hair doing? Oh, well, that depends. On what? Will you do it for half price or not? By heck, you know, it's no wonder I'm not a millionaire, isn't it? I'm too soft-hearted by far. Go on, then, but don't go putting it round. All right, later this afternoon. Say about half past four. Lovely, all right. Right, I'll tell her. Oh. You're going soft in your old age. No, I'm not. Look, he's only going to take me half as long to cut his hair, isn't it? He always keeps his cap on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I'm late, Luffy, but my daughter has been waltzing me round the shopping precinct till I would dizzy. Oh, you're all right. It's quiet enough here. Oh, a boss like that must be worth his weight in gold. Oh, it's not like a boss, are you, Luffy? We're a team, you and me, aren't we? I like to think so, love. Of course we are, and don't let anybody tell you different. Do you fancy a cuppa? Ah, right, go on. Come on, girl. Give me two minutes to get me coat on. Right. <laughs> Do you know these things cost money? Go on, get off! Don't let me catch you around here again either. Go on! Hey, mister! What? Have you got any donuts left? Yes, why? Well, that's your fault for burning some, isn't it? Yeah, little. If you rub that much harder, you'll wear it away. Just chase some flipping kids off it, haven't they? Oh, well, while they're playing around this, you're not choking all over my doorstep, are they? And I suppose that's summit. They have no respect for hope these days. Ah, well, you will have these flashy status symbols, won't you? Well, it wasn't my idea. Mind you, not that I'm complaining now I've got it. No. You know, I'll miss Audrey when she goes. Well, who says she's going? Well, nobody. But you know what Audrey is? One of these world's butterflies fluttering from flower to flower. And when the scent goes from one, she goes on looking for the next one, isn't she? Till somebody clips her wings. Oh, had you anybody particular in mind? No, that'll be telling, won't it? Uh, do you want anything? I did Mike Baldwin let you out for playtime. Oh, just a bottle of milk if you've got one. Mm. You know, I wondered why you delayed painting that sign on. Uh, milk, you said, I think. <laughs> You got them twisted round your little finger, haven't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. What kind of a boss would let you come and go as you please the way Alf does and let you run your own little business on the side? I told you, Alf's not like a boss. He's more like a mate. We have a lot of laughs together, so will you stop going on at I'm me? I'm not going on at you. I just want you to realise how lucky you are. I don't want you doing anything daft and chucking it all away. I know how lucky I am, and I don't need you to tell me, thank you very much. Oh, well, just remember that next time the bread man comes winking and promises you a whole new world. You can't go on drifting forever, you know. Are you joking? Now, if you were talking about that young fella from the wine wholesalers, oh! You'll never change, will you? Not in a million years, so you might just as well save your breath. <laughs> Out for the night, is she? I wish she wouldn't talk about her as if she was the cat. She's gone round to Jess. Mm. She might as well move in there the time she spends there. I wish you'd leave the kid alone. When she's here, you're on at her all the time. When she's out, she's in the wrong. What do you want? I just want to have, have a chance to live our own lives, Eunice. That's all I want. Just live in our own home, the two of us, together. I don't think I'm being unreasonable. And I don't think it's unreasonable to want to give my daughter a roof over her head. But for how long? For as long as she needs it. 
If that's Kambal, I wanted some chairs shifted, it can get lost. Come in, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Alf. Fred? Uh, come in. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> hello, Alf. Eunice? Oh, would you like a cup of tea? It's freshly made. Uh, no, no, Tom. Oh. Take the weight off your feet, Alf. No, I'm all right, Tom. Well, what can we do for you, lad? Uh, well, it's a bit tricky, really. Um, do you remember having a brush with a woman last week? Mrs. Beswick. Mrs. Beswick? Mm. Oh, yeah, it's her from the Ladies' Guild. I told you about her. Right nutcase she is. All teeth and tweeds comes in, lording it, you know. They think they own the place, these women. They do, they really. They think they own you, they do. Well, what about her, Alf? Well, she's made a complaint, I'm afraid. Oh, no. A complaint? She's not to complain about. I'm not here to fetch and carry for the likes of her. No, well, that's not the way the council sees it, you see. I mean, actually, she had booked the room, you see, and it wasn't ready, so she was in the right. And to make matters worse, she's the town clerk's sister-in-law. No. Fred, now look what you've done. I can't leave you alone for half an hour. Look, uh, what are they going to do about it, Alf? Well, the chairman will come round and see you, like, and, uh, well, just to get your side of the story, you know. Oh, he'll get that, mate. Don't worry about that. He'll get that all yeah, right. Yeah, well, just a minute, Fred. It's not quite as easy as that. You mean there's something else? Yeah, well, there's no to worry about, though, but, um, <clears throat> you see, by rights, he should have been put in the picture before you ever moved in here, but he was away on holiday at the time. Just, just what are you getting at, Alf? Well, he wants to find out that there was no doubt that you should have had this job. I mean, not that there is, like, you know, but, um, I think in the circumstances, it might be as well to butter him up a bit. Be nice to him, you mean? Well, that's the top and bottom of it, aye. Yeah, well, uh, leave it to us, mate. I mean, after all, you, you did do us a favour, didn't you? Uh, yeah, but I'd be glad if you didn't mention that, you know. Yeah, well, uh, leave it to us, pal. We'll sort it out. Leave it to Uni, say. <laughs> She'll charm him. She can charm the birds out of the trees, can you, Uni? <laughs> I'll try. Field double eight two five, Audrey Potter speaking. Oh, hello, Tony. Yeah, I'm fine. I couldn't be better. As a matter of fact, my life has really started to pick up since you walked out of it. Missing you? Yeah, well, sometimes on a very wet Monday. I'll tell you what I'm not missing, though, them bruises you gave me. Oh, is that a fact? No, I'm sorry, Tony, I'm not interested. I might be if you ever come back into fashion. Ta-da! Cheeky beggar, eh? Oh, not you, Tony, that were him, cheeky devil. He wanted to know if I'd go back to him. Oh, what's up, is he run out of girls to thump? You're not going, are you? Oh, yeah, see, come on, I'm not totally do-lally. I mean, come on, look how my life's changed since I left him. Decent place to live. Oh, well, I'm not arguing with that, am I? <sighs> exactly. Nice little job. A boss who thinks I made a solid gold. And for once in me flipping life, no complications. Mm, yeah, well, I wouldn't be too sure of that if I were you. Eh? I was uh, chatting to our friendly neighbourhood grocer the other day. And uh, unless I'm going barmy, he's got plans for you. Plans? What plans? I think he's here in wedding bells. <laughs> no complications, she said. <laughs> Yeah. Ty, love. Hello, Ivy, love. Hey, what's up with you? I thought you were one of them that never had a word to set at cat till after dinner time. It's not a bad morning, love. You're joking. It's terrible. Hey, you want to give yourself to it, love. Don't fight it. That's the way to treat this weather. Morning, girls. Morning. Morning. Purse, 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 purse. Purse, purse. Gotcha. I'm off. Right. Excuse me, have you taken root there or something? I'm working out a plan of action, aren't I? Oh, I thought you'd suddenly lost the use of your legs. A splitting headache or a suitcase job, what do you think? Oh, don't ask me, love. A proposal from Alf. It's uncharted territory, even for me. I suppose you could say yes. Oh, well, you could. 
I mean, he's a man of substances, Alf. In every way. <laughs> Ta-ra, see ya. Good morning, Leonard. Good morning, Alfredo. It is too, isn't it? I think so. Ah. So do I. Give us a, a quarter of mint imperials. Sir. If you hang on a minute, I'll get you a dustbin lid. You'll get more in it. Ooh, what a good idea. Well, steady on. That's all the milk there is. Oh, oh I am sorry. I was always under the impression that lasses ate very little, watching the figures. I didn't realise they ate like Alsatians. Well, I don't have to watch my figure. I'll let the fellas do that for me. Who wants a cup of tea? Oh, me, please. There's no milk. She's had the last. Debbie. Well, he never told me till it was too late. But it won't kill us to drink without, will it? Don't like tea without milk. It tastes bitter. What time's this councillor coming, then? This morning. What time this morning? Oh, well, do I know? I've never said, did he? Well, what are we supposed to do, sit around all day waiting? I'll tell you somebody who definitely shouldn't wait for him. Oh, and why not? Yes, why not? Because she's surplus to requirements. Her name's not on the rent book. She's a squatter as far as the council are concerned. Oh, she's my daughter. That's right, I am. Well, I've said what I think. If you want to get us chucked out, go on. Look, I wish you'd stop talking about getting chucked out, Fred. Yes, and if we do get chucked out, it'll be because of you, not me. I never insulted the poor old lady, did I, ma'am? Neither did I. Then what's this councillor coming round for, then? If it's not to find out who the ignorant pig is round Listen, you're going to feel the back of my hand, lady, as big as you are, I'm look, telling you. Look, will you give over, you two? Debbie, look, perhaps you're better, Mizzle. I mean, Fred's right. You are a... a squatter. I am not a squatter. But I could introduce you to one if you like. I've got a few friends who'd move in here like a flash. Mm. Oh, and guess what? One of them hasn't had a wash for six months. Debbie! <laughs> look, I have some errands I want you to do for me. Yeah, in Albania. I heard that. I wonder the noise you're making. Will you stop it! Sorry, love. I dropped my pencil. Yeah, well, next time you drop it behind there, would you whistle a little tune or something just to let folks know? Hey, listen, have you had your breakfast? I had a cup of tea. That's all I had. So how about me grilling some ham for you? Then we can have his breakfast together, can't we? Doesn't that make your mouth water? Uh, no, not exactly. A couple of eggs with that. I reckon we'll be living eye off the og. Og, pig. Do you get it? It's that. Ronnie. Oh, oh, babies. Hello, hey, that looks nice. What thing can I have a slice of that? Oh, I could eat a horse, actually. I've had to take some of the papers around. One of the lads didn't turn up. Do you know, for a minute, I thought you'd come in for air, too. Oh, I know. It looks as if it needs it. Well, no, you're looking a bit windswept, you know. Oh, am I? Well, could you fit me in this morning? I think I could get an hour off for about 11. Oh, yes, I think so. Oh, all right. Uh, how's that for you? Oh, it looks scrumptious. <laughs> oh, dear. Look, bye-bye breakfast. Half I better go and put my overall on. I'll see you later, oh, mate. Right. About 11, then. Nope. OK. You don't want any ham, do you? No. No, just ask him. Hi, hi there. No thanks, we don't want any firewood. <laughs> hey, what are you up to if it's not a rude question? I'm boarding all this up, aren't I? Oh, what for? Well, it's mine now. Yours? What, you mean you bought it? Yeah. Look, I don't want to repeat myself, but I mean, uh, why, what for? I'm building here, aren't I? I'm going to put a house up here. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right by me, like. It's, uh, well, it's just that... Uh, well... Well, Ivy was thinking of buying it, like, uh, for us. And why didn't you? Well, we can't afford it, can we? See ya. Cheers, mate. Oh. Councillor Critchley. That's me. You can't see me. I'm invisible. That's, uh Your wife's daughter. Debbie, wife's daughter. This is Eunice, the wife. Councillor Critchley. How do you do? Hello. Uh, do come in. Oh, thank you. You're, uh, a bit late, are you? No, I, mean, I, know, I know it's not your fault. Busy fellas like you, you have the town to run. It's just that, uh, well, I'm late myself. I've got to dash. Can you just talk it over with Mrs G, anything? And, uh, well, will that be all right? Oh, I think so. Oh. Right, well, uh, if you did happen to want to see me, I'll be uh, I'll be over at the Rovers. I work there, you know. Oh, no. Right, well, see you later, then. Bye, love. Ta-da. 
Would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Now, uh, how can I help you? How can you help me? You know, I'm not sure. In fact, I'm not even sure why I'm here at all. Well, we understood from Alf, uh, Mr. Roberts, that there'd been a complaint about us and you'd come to check up. Well, that's what we understood from Alf, Mr. Roberts. Check up on you? I don't know where I've got that from. I'm chairman of the Social Services Committee. I'm not a detective, Mrs. G. You mean there hasn't been a complaint? Well, a lady has complained that your husband was rude to her. Well, he'll deny it. He'll say he wasn't. He says she's exaggerating. Well, <laughs> she is a bit sensitive, actually. Easily upset. And if your husband was even a brook, say, she might have taken it the wrong way. You know how some women are. <laughs> well, Freddie can be a bit abrupt sometimes. Can he? Well, I, I mean, you show me a fellow that can't. Maybe he'd had a bad day at the horses, you know. He likes a bet, does well, he? Well, only occasionally. Hey, there's nothing wrong in that. <laughs> of course not. I was away when you were appointed here, Mrs. G. As caretaker. Oh, were you? On holiday. Somewhere nice. Florida. Oh, lovely. I'll be honest with you. I was surprised to find the job was taken when I got back. And not only that, you were all settled in as well. Oh, why? Just that it was so very quick. As if somebody was in an almighty hurry. Uh, where are my manners? Would you like a cup of tea? I'd love one. I'll, uh, I'll put the kettle on. Well, I hope Modern finds that satisfactory. Oh, yes, I think it's very nice. It sort of brings me out, don't you think? Oh, it gives your personality a boost. <laughs> oh, yes, I suppose so. Look, I I'll have to be getting right. back to work. I mean, Rita will be going mad. Sure, you know, I'm getting better at this, although I said it myself. I think I'll uh, probably go into brain surgery next week. Oh, thank you, that's oh, right. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, Mavis, listen, yeah. just hang on a minute. Listen. Don't take a blind bit of notice of anything that I say to Alf. Go on. Thank you, love. Okay. You married after Jim, won't you? Oh, are you finished? Yes. Uh, are you going somewhere? Oh, love, you don't mind if you take me dinner hour early, do you? Only it's uh, it's this one. Uh, she's had her hair done for tonight. A fella. I mean, we're all the same underneath the pancake, aren't we, Mavis? But has she got anything to wear as she thump? So she wants me to go with her and find her something really sharp and slinky. You don't mind, do you, lovey? Come on, Mavis, we'll have you looking like bold Derek before we finish. Ta-da! <laughs> 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 Don't you know? Well, I won't be asking you if I did. Oh, well, Len's going to hoard it up, so there'll be less mess when he starts building. Building? Yeah, he's going to build a house here. My egg. <sighs> so it's the same old story, isn't it? Then what's got it just goes on getting more and more. Well, I'll tell you something for note. Next time I come on this earth, I'm going to have my own business, and I'm going to be self-employed, because it's them worrying here, it's the earth. Yeah, well, you can't keep on avoiding him in a little space like that, can you? I know I can't. Oh, well, see, what am I going to do? Why can't fellas just be mates with me? I have a platonic relationship, you know. I think it's something to do with the way you flutter your big blue eyes. They're brown. Don't you feel anything for him at all? Oh, he's nice enough, Alf. I mean, he's a real gentleman, which is very rare, but feelings... Audrey, how old are you? Hmm? You were? <clears throat> well, I won't see 40 again. Well, doesn't the idea of a prospering little business and a doting husband appeal to your tone? Sometimes. So I'll tell you something, the older you get, the more attractive it'll seem. I thought it was summertime, not a corner shop, something a bit more glamorous. You mean, like a pork butcher? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes, I know. The more glamorous they are, the less of a gentleman they are. Oh, exactly, as I found out to my cost. Yeah. Hey, you two are a bit serious, aren't you? 
No, there's nothing wrong with me, Betty. The only problems I've got, I've got holes in all my knickers. I'll lend you a pair of mine if you go oh, so well. I shall remember that. <laughs> Say, Alf seemed a little bit grumpy this morning. Did he? Yeah. If he got a lot on his mind, you know. I wonder what that could be. Couldn't be you, could it? Now, Betty, stop crying. It doesn't suit you. I oh, know, love it, but I do enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll be waiting for you for a bit. Well, he's only just gone, hasn't he? Well, what did he want to play with valuation? Oh, I know what I want to drink. Well, sherry would be very nice. Oh. Hello, Ken. Hi, hi. What, uh, what did Councillor Critchley's brief seem to be? Brief? Yeah, I mean, did you think he was going through the motions of following up a complaint from Mrs. Beswick, or was he just snooping about? Well, he asked a flipping lot of questions. I mean, for instance, was it my idea to apply for job as caretaker, or was it Fred's? And, and why did we go to Alf instead of through the proper channel? Stuff like that. Oh, very <coughs> nice. Charming, is it? But he got me rattled once or twice. Well, I thought I told you to butter him up. Well, I tried, but he made me feel uneasy. What do you think he's up to, Ken? Well, I assume it's the Mrs. Beswick business. I mean, Alf assures me there's nothing else to worry about. Well, he can assure us again. Uh, hey, Alf. Yes? Have you got a minute, Alf? Uh, well, I was just going to buy a drink for my uh, staff. Well, it is important. Oh, we're just going, aren't we, Alf? Are we? I thought you wanted me to wax your legs. Oh, yes, that's right. She, she has been promising to wax my legs for some time. I'll see you later, Alf. Oh, does it happen to you often? I mean, folk disappear when you arrive. Just give me a pint of bitter with enough. Right. There you are, Mr. Tatler. 22p change. Right, so. Will you tell me, Summit? What? Am I right in thinking that you and me are just a little bit friendly? Cos I know we got off on the wrong footing. Hmm, happen we are. Good. I still think you're a bit too flighty. But, you know, you're not a bad-looking young woman. I'd rather look at you than the back of a bus, especially when it's raining. Thank you very much, Mr Tatler. And you won't forget all of me love tomorrow. I promise faithfully. Right, ta-da. Ta-da, lovey. Hello. Hi, Hello. Hello. <sighs> what are you doing, Alf? I've got something to say, and I've a feeling if I don't say it now, I'll never say it. Oh, Luffy, come on. There might be someone wanting something for their dinner. Well, they'll have to starve. Go on, through there. Yes, Alf? Audrey. Yes, Alf? There's been times in my life when I've, I've missed an opportunity because I haven't grabbed it, if you know what I mean. I, I think so. So that's what I'm doing now, grabbing it. Are you? Now, it's nearly two years since Reedy died. Is it really? I like being married. Did you? I like being married to my first wife and all. Well, you're very lucky then. Oh, in that respect, you know. So I've been thinking. Yes. Well, I mean, you like working here, don't you? Oh, I do. I'm, well, as much as I like working anyway. Yeah, and I like you working here. I mean, you're a lot of laughs, aren't you? Am I? I don't see, think I've ever seen so much fun here. I mean, there's not many giggles in half a pound of tapioca, is there? No. So I've been thinking. Yes, so you said. Well, I think you could see a future for yourself here, you know? I mean, not just as a sort of job... Well, I suppose it is a job in a way, you know? Now, I'm not trying to rush things, Audrey, but if you could think of me as something other than a boss, uh, and more as a sort of possible... Alf. Yes, love? Lovey... I'm very flattered, really, I am. And who knows, well, perhaps in time I, I could come to think of you as a possible... <sighs> That's the problem, you see, Alf. Problem? The in-time bit. I mean, in time, not, it's not me. I don't think further than the end of me nose. If it's not happening now, it's not happening as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I suppose I did think that once upon a time I might have a future. Big, rosy future, you know. But didn't materialise, none of it. Well, you can have a future here, you see. It can materialise, that's what I'm telling you. Oh, I know you are, lovey, but I'm not sure. Not to you, not of me, Alf. I mean, it would just be raising your hopes. I'll take that risk gladly. No, Alf. Oh, I see. Come on, I 
Better let them in. Right. They'll be banging the door down. Audrey. Yeah. yeah. It were worth a try. Oh. Of course it was. What are you going to do with that old bench that was in the street? Uh, it's coming to pieces. I think I'll just get a big hammer and smash it up. Oh, oh no. What the hell's up with you two? Well, it's not any old bench, is no, it? No, it isn't. Of course it's any old bench. You bother up. You know it's all the billing and cooing that's been done on it over the years. I mean, most of the lads and lasses round here have held hands on it at some time or another. Trough after trough has been flighted on it. I should wonder. And all you can think of doing is smashing it up. What the hell else do you expect me to do with it? Well, it needs a new little trysting place finding for it. Yeah, somewhere where other couples can trist. Yeah. And get into even more trouble. It's definitely being smashed up now. Bet if you want to buy him, he's going cheap. No, love it. <laughs> Uh, half a bit of please, Betty. Yeah, sure. I'll get that. No, thanks. I'm just having the one. Thing. Hey, there's no hard feelings, is there, about me buying that bit of ground, you know, putting the house up? Well, uh, no, I'm not bothered about it, no. Is Ivy? Well, she's not over the moon. I mean, no, she'd uh, got her eye on it, hasn't she? Thanks very much. No. To do what with? I don't know, same as you. Just build an extension on the house, you know. Well, would that have been practical? I mean, you're not in the business or anything, are you? I didn't say it was practical. I just said she'd got her eye on it, and now she's not too happy that you're going to do it by it and do it up. That's all I'm saying. Cheers. Hello. Sorry to bother you again, Mrs. G, but something's been bothering me. Would you like to come in? No, thanks. It won't take a minute. And I've got a meeting. It was just that I got the impression you might have been a bit upset by my visit. Am I right? You did ask rather a lot of questions. I did, didn't I? It's the job, you see. My council job, not my real job. I hope I don't go poking my nose at down there. I have a small hotel down past Side Road. Oh, do you? But when you're on the council, it gets to be second nature, asking questions. How much will it cost? How much will it put on the rates? Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, I thought I'd come and tell you that there's nothing personal. Oh, well, I, I never thought for one moment. I, I mean, you were just doing your job. Good. That's really set my mind at rest. I don't want to fall out with you, Mrs. G. Bye. Is he only just gone? Batman from the council. Uh, no, no. He, he went and then he came back again. Has he told Moonface to stop acting like a bouncer? No, he hasn't. Mm. Well, what did he say then? Oh, not a lot. He's, he's a very nice man, actually. Have you noticed, ma'am? Fred sweats an awful lot. Little beads on his forehead and his top lip. I wish you'd give over about Fred. Well, it's not easy. I find him fascinating. Hey, anything to eat? In the fridge. Hey, don't eat that last piece of plate meat pie. It's Freddy's. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, he'll murder you. I'm warning you. Well, he won't get the chance, will he? Because I'm bored living here. Do you know? I think I'll go back to my dad. If he'll have you. That's it, lovey. The whole sad, sorry story. You're your own worst enemy, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, love. Hello. Hello, Elsie. Well, did he propose? And did you turn him down? And not only that, she's chucked a job in at the shop. Yes, well, oh, I suppose yeah, she had to. Oh, come on, didn't. lovey. I mean, well, he might have got the message today, but one whiff of my fragrance tomorrow, next week, and his eyes will be following me all around the shop, won't they, like sheeps? What are you going to do now, kid? Uh, for a job, I mean? Good question. Oh, it's not that important, money. Not with the mates I've got, not to mention a very doting daughter. Look, you can't come and live with us. You know we've not got enough room. Well, you can stay here for as... Uh, as long as you like. Oh, <laughs> she said with great enthusiasm, I don't think. No, I think it's best to put more than a couple of doors between me and Alf. Actually, uh, I rang Tony and I struck lucky in a way because he's got to go down London working for a week so I can go there and look after his place for him. Of course, he thinks that by my doing that, I'll be beholden to him, won't I, silly fool? Oh, Mum, couldn't you have tried with Alf? I know he's not Robert Redford, but at least you've been settled. He's had to keep rattling around like an old bagatelle ball, you mean? No, lovey, I couldn't. No. 
Oh, that'll be all right. Don't worry, I'll land on my feet again. Oh, we don't doubt that, do we, Gail? No. I'll miss her, that's for sure. So will I. I fancied her myself. Don't we all? You know, I reckon if I'd been a bit previous, if I'd waited a bit, you know, wooed her more. Do you want to know my opinion? Go on, let's have it. I don't think she was the right type for you. How do you mean? Well, she was hardly a home bird, was she? I mean, I don't think she's had much practice of getting your slippers out and making a fruit cake. What you're saying is, you don't think I could handle something like that a bit racy? Well... Well, you are, aren't you? Well, listen, I'll tell you so much. If I'd have played my cards right, I bet I could have had Audrey, homebody or not. All right. If that's what you think, all right. But next time you fancy your chances, and it doesn't work out, don't come whining to me. Well, who's whining? <laughs> listen, mate, I'm telling you, if I'd have played my cards right, I could have had Audrey, definitely. <clears throat> oh. Well, then. Trouble, Alf? No, 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 just a bit of fun, you know, between mates. Usual topic, women. I didn't know you bothered with them. Well, I do. If you say so. No, I just came to say I've had a word with the G's. Yeah, so I believe. Nice woman, Mrs G. Don't care much for him. Anyway, I think it'll have to go back to the committee. Her appointment, them moving in across there. Even if it's embarrassing for you, I can't see any way out. See you at housing tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Stanley. Hey, That is the greatest compliment you can pay to any chef, that. Savouring every morsel as if it's your last. And as I was the geezer that was slaving over the off-frying pan, I'm very gratified to see the way you're shoveling it down. You're good at breakfasts. Yeah, well, the speciality's El aren't they, breakfast? I like your fried bread. Don't go soft in the middle like this. Oh, Chelsea. Come in, Anthony. Must have been the aroma of the cook in the stroner. Should I have been vaccinated before I come in here? No, well, don't exaggerate, Elsie. It's not that bad. No, I need a rates rebate living next door to this lot. Anyway, message from the big white chief. Elder? Yes, she's just wrong. She says she'll be home at dinner time. Whether that's a threat or a promise, I just don't know. Not coming home down the weekend. Well, don't blame me. She says Archie's suddenly picked up. You can't rely on him, can you? Is that a brother? Yeah. Never hear from him usually. Till something's wrong. Then, will you come over, Hilda? I've got to stay in bed. Is he not married? I was widowed. She knew what she was getting out of, Doris, I'll tell you. <laughs> anyway, that's the message. Archie's suddenly picked up and Hilda will be home at dinner time. And all I can say is... God help her. Sir so else. what do you think of that? Not due home till weekend, and now look. Oh, don't be like that, Stan. If I know you're ill, then her little heart will be beaten with joy sending tidings of her return. I know why she got on the phone. Why? So this place will be strict and smart the time she got here. We do her work. Yeah, well, she could have something in that, couldn't she? No chance. No? She'll take us as she finds us. You know what's wrong with her? Well, she's too particular. I mean, I don't mind a bit of soap now. I never know when to stop. But she's a different. She'll have you slaving and cleaning things out until the day you die. Unless you put your foot down. Um, what we could do with now is, do you have those same ones in boxes of 20? Uh, it's, it's reference number 5728. Is that Bobby Simpleton you're talking uh, to? Well, we, we'll have two dozen. The man with no face. We have a voice. We have a name. Uh, Rita. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just somebody here. But we have no face. Uh, no, I think that's all, actually. Oh, it's been nice talking to you. <laughs> it's nice to know I can make somebody happy. <laughs> yes, I'll be here. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Rita, honestly. Honestly what? I wish you wouldn't every time. Well, the sound of you and Bobby Simpleton cooing at each other, aren't oh, it? Simpson. Simpson, then. Well, anyway, I mean, it's nice to be on friendly terms with somebody that you're often in contact with. Oh, what have you been in contact with him? On the telephone. Do you know where I think? What? I don't think there's anybody at the other end of that phone. I think that stationery firm have one of them computers that goes, uh oh, hello, Mavis. Oh, you are. <laughs> the sound of your voice makes me blow a fuse. Mm. <laughs> that side of it has got nothing to do with me. Ah, oh, no, not officially. No. No, what well, if you could tell Chris so that they were doing a good job over there, that we'd be sorry to. Morning. Howdy. What can I get you? 
Uh, have you got any of them uh, cleaning things for ovens and that? You know, them oven pad oh. things. Mm. Does that mean that Hilda's returning? Dead right. It also means that Stanley's nerves snap. Mm. I mean, you should have heard him at breakfast. He was definitely going to defy her. By ten o'clock, he's saying, well, perhaps we can just do a little bit of tidying up, you know. Want to see him now? Them white tornadoes have got nothing on Stanley with the wind up in. Hey, Team Pete. It's hard off. I wouldn't mind if you day off. Yeah, you'd been better off working. I would, you're right. Well, I can see you gentlemen would love me to stay and uh, join in your discussion, but I think I'd better get back to Stanley. We'll try to manage, Eddie. See ya. Bye. See, the thing is, if I'm not careful, I could be dropped right in it over this business. I don't see why. You don't? No, unless you're saying that Fred and Eunice shouldn't have got that flat. No, I'm not saying that, no. Well, well then. What I am saying, though, if Critchley thinks there's something fishy going on, there's no telling where this might end. Well, yes, I can but see that. But if you that. could say something good about it, I mean, they're not doing a bad job over there, are they? Well, Fred and Eunice? Yeah. Well, not bad, no. Hey, Fred. Yeah? Have you seen what time it is? Oh, come on, you're going to be late. Well, that's the beauty of this place, love. It's only a cockstrad across there, isn't it? We'd better make sure we keep it then, hadn't we? Be a bit more careful what we say to folk in future. Here we go again. Well, if you'd been a bit more polite to Mrs. Bessick in the first place... Oh, that old cow. There'd have been no call for Councillor Critchley to come round here and see us, would there? Oh, he'll do now. It's the same, they're all, they're all the same, these fellas. Just want a bit of bowing and scraping, that's all. It's very nice, really. He runs a small hotel. All right. Well, not a pub. I mean, you know, residential. All right. Hey, Fred, come on. You're going to be late. Well, if I'm late, Brett Lynch will be ten minutes after me. Did he say he was uh, coming again, this Councillor Critchley fella? No. Anyway, love, if he does, don't forget what I said. You know, be sweet to him, like. See you then. Till out. Uh, Are we not having any dinner, then? Well, it comes. He's just frightened to get in the kitchen, Zazie, that's what it is. You should eat off the floor in there, except there's nothing to eat off it. Hey up. Could be. Hi, it is. Uh, in here, love. Ah. <laughs> all, all right, then. It is now you're here, Hilda. Miss me, have you? Well, enough. Did Elsie tell you to expect me? Yeah. Oh. How's she on the men, then? Well, he still has the odd bilious attack, but he's on his feet, that's the main thing. You're gonna have a butchie's round the house, Hilda. You know, do a quick tour of inspection. Mm. Yeah, I've thought about this little house a time or two, I can tell you. Have a look in the kitchen. Ah, see the mess we've left. <laughs> You know, you're in a place that long. You never really see it for what it is. Not till you've been away from it a while. Home sweet home, eh? But I have to say it. It's a mucky old hole, is this, and no mistake. You yeah. are! Hey. Well, let's face it, it's a pokey little shop should have been knocked down years ago. Oh, come on, Hilda. It's your own little palace, this. Hogs and mansion. We've cleaned it up. Oh, after a week at our arches. Open my eyes as that. What's your arse you got then? I'd be glad swimming pools are well. How's he uh, give him a bit of chip shop before he got that house? No, it's only an ordinary enough house. Well then. But it's on a new estate, isn't it? All laid out. And inside it's all white with that and he and you know, that bumpy wallpaper. What's bumpy wallpaper got on your Muriel, you little Ah, oh, but they've got real views there, you see, Eddie. After all the work we put in cleaning this up. Oh, Stan, love, you could work all week on this place. Wouldn't make a bit of difference. Oh, well, go and get me case unpacked and get us some dinner on. Would you credit it? Great little house, this. Well, she could have been in back, you know, doing her. It has been no. No, I swear there were nobody else there. Well, why didn't you ask? Not like you to be back, would it, coming forward? Ah, well, you see, I didn't twig till after I'd left shop. I went in, packet of tea, one thing and another. I said, draft. Well, I were outside before I thought. That little space where Audrey should have been, there were nobody in it. Anyway, you soon know. I mean, if Audrey has gone, you'll have Alf on your doors kept asking for you. Oh, well, they'd be wasted his time. I give the best years of my life to Alf Roberts, and he's not having any more of them. Yeah, you'd go back in a flash. Oh, 
Anyway, I've got to go. I'll see you later. All right. Ciao. 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 So, the plot thickens. What's happened to Audrey? Has Alf stuck her in his freezer? Or is she hiding in there? <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. It's the best thing that could have happened to your house. Oh, come on, put all the one leg. Well, of course. I mean, instead of having a gap next to you, you'll have a house there, won't you? Except that I think I prefer gap if it's all right with you. Give us two meat pies to take out, Bello. Come in, go. Yeah. Hello, Hello there. there. You all right? You look as if you are. Yeah, uh, Ivy, you'll have a drink with me, won't you, love? No, thanks. I'm not stopping. Think about it, though, you know. You lose less heat that way, and you won't have as much damp coming through. Yes, but there's going to be a bigger risk of me having noisy neighbours, isn't there? Not unless you had a big gap next year. I mean, it only needs a load of kids just to make it into a hideout. Sixty, love. That's right, love. Anyway, you're going to build, aren't you? So what's you to talking? There are. Drive it. And all that well. Ah, she'll come round to it. Well, she looks as if she's still got a long way to go yet. Have you been served, Len? Ah, uh, not a good notice. No, give us a fine, will you? What about you, Len? Well, if Audrey really has gone, I think it's a good thing. I doubt Alf would say that. I think even Alf would agree, given time. Hey, hang about. Hey, yeah. Elsie will have a drink with me, won't you, love? Never been known to refuse. I'll have half a lager, please. You'd be surprised at what I've been known to refuse. <laughs> Elsie's bound to know. Elsie's bound to know what? What's happened to Audrey? Ah. Oh, come on. Well, what is it exactly you want to know? Is she still working at the shop? No. Is she still <laughs> lodging with you? No. So where does that leave us, then? Is Mrs. Potter's departure temporary or permanent? Well, it's permanent until she decides to come back, but she won't be going back to work at the corner shop, if that's what you mean. So what's happened? Come on, Elsie, give us a right tale. They're like vultures ready to pounce, Shut up, they? I want to hear this. Well, it seems that Alf got the question, Audrey said no, and thought she couldn't continue under the circumstances, so she packed her bags and off. Well, I can't say that I'm surprised, or even very sorry. So is Alf drowning his sorrows or roaming about in sackcloth and ashes or what? Oh. Afternoon, Alf. Ben. You will wear yourself away to a shadow slaving like this. Oh, yeah, well, it's me slack time, and, you know, get lunchtime over and... Uh, any road, uh, have you any thoughts about, you know... I have, Alf. I've been doing some ferreting as well. Monday to the meeting, notification of the appointment. Mm. What have you decided? It won't do, Alf. I'm sorry. I'd like to say different, but I can't. It will not do. Well, I don't see why, but I don't... Well, Alf! This Fred G. You were best man at his wedding, right? Well, <laughs> that don't mean that I've... Now, Alf! I'm just giving you the facts. You were his best man. Neither of them, Mr or Mrs G, had any previous experience in such a post. They were appointed without any other candidates being considered. No, I don't have to draw your diagram, do I? That flat was empty for months. I know it was. It's the manner of filling it that's at issue. I'm sorry, Alf. It just won't do. Now, what do you suggest? Well, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. The hard way would involve an official investigation. We'll have to admit there's been malpractice. Oh, the press will have a field day. Yeah, well, what's the easy way? Well, you go and have a gentle talk to him. That Mrs G, at least. I think she's a sensible woman. You go and explain to him how it would be to everybody's advantage if they could make other arrangements. We could give them time. A month, two months, perhaps. Luke, I'll come across there with you. Give you all the backing I can. Look at it. The year dot. Oh, I wish you could have seen our arches, Stan. It was like summit out of one of them colour supplementaries. No wonder you bothered to come back. We're 50 years behind the rest of the world, us. Oh, well. This clock's been shut at. Two, what hasn't in this house? Till the time, all right, but the, the alarm won't go. Well, you never set it anyway. Well, supposing I'm going to go early in the morning. I'm stuck, aren't I? Here. You never told me about this. What? This letter. It says here, 
We can buy the ground rent to this house for £48. I'm not laying out 48 quid. I haven't got 48 quid any road. Oh, typical, isn't it? We don't even own the ground we're stood on. Got a ramshackle old house, and if they wanted to, they could tell us to move it. Let them try. I've a good mind to buy it myself and charge you ground rent for the space you take up. I'll happen you right, though. Happen what we got here. It's not worth spending 48 quid on. Doesn't sound like you. No, I'm sorry, Chuck. It's with stopping at our arches, you know. It's like that song, I suppose, isn't it? How are you going to keep them down on the farm now that they've seen Paris? Me? Well, me. I've seen Paris, haven't I? Now it seems like I'm back on the farm again. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's this complaint, you see. It's, it's, it's made us look at things carefully and... Uh, well, it seems we jumped the gun when we let you come into the flat. I was an oldie at the time, so... Yeah, and me being your best man, you know, I mean, it puts us all in a very delicate situation if people start talking. Hey, look, if you're trying to say something, Alf, come on, spit it out, mate. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is, um, well, I was a bit previous, you know, giving you the job like, and, and well, now we've got to find a way of, uh, of sorting it out, you know, uh, without too much fuss. You're not going to chuck us out. Now, don't go distressing yourself. Oh, well, that, that's the point. I mean, that's the last thing we want to do. I'm very glad to hear it. Oh, so am I. Oh, I'm making a right mess of this. You see, we, we would like you to leave, you know, leave the flat like, but uh, of your own accord, in your own time. You mean you want us to chuck ourselves out? Oh, no. It's a very unfortunate business. You want us to carry the can for the cock up your little meadow there, is that it? Yeah, I'm sorry, for, I'm sorry, Eunice. <laughs> yes, but you are saying that we have to leave. Well, yes, yes we are. Did you hear that? Right back to square one. Of course I flaming heard it. Now then, Mrs G, worst things happen at sea. Just have a word with your husband and then we'll see what we can sort out, all right? Come on. Good day. Stopped it all over again. It's not my fault. It's not my flaming fault! Kevin, hang on, it's for you. Oh, wait a minute, she's that excited, she's leaping over oh, counter. Not leaping. Hello. Oh, hello, Bobby. Well, no, it's just her way of being funny. So laughing. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, but, uh, well, I'm afraid I'm busy tonight. Oh. And, no, actually, I'm, I'm busy all week as it happens. Jeez. Well, it's, I mean, <laughs> you sound very nice as well. Oh, I'm sure we will one day. Yes, well, uh, I expect you'll get over it. Bye-bye. Bye. Mavis Ryan. Oh, I know what you're going to say. You got a nice young man like that asking you out. And he was asking you out, wasn't well, he? Well, yes, he was, as a matter of fact. But, I mean, well, how do we know that he's going to be nice? I mean, all we ever do is speak to him on the telephone. Well, they don't come labelled and gift wrap, love. Sometimes you have to take a chance. Well, I couldn't go on a blind date. Just couldn't. No answer to that. Well, anyway, I mean, he might be married. Who might be married? Bobby Simpson. What, a cricketer used to play for Australia? No, this is somebody else, Mr Fairfield. Stationary chap that fancies maybe. He would, knowing her. <laughs> oh, he works for him, you fool. No, look, I haven't got a minute. I just want to show you this little lot. Oh, is this the plans of the new house? That's right, yeah, you see, this is the uh, side elevator. Have you shown elevator. these no. to Ivy? No, I haven't, and I'm not going to either. Uh, well, I think it's very enterprising of you, Mr Fairclough, I really do. Coming from her, that doesn't say a lot. Well, I fancy something else. You get a bit sick of putting washers on taps. Len, are you sure you're doing the right thing? We're not overreaching ourselves. How do you mean? Well, the money. Well, yeah, we've got to lay a lot out. But we'll get it back. I'm hoping so. Hoping? It's a fair bet. I mean, I can't say fairer than that. You don't get a copper bottom guarantee with a job like this. So long as you're happy. I am. Well, you got the racing results there. Shut up a minute. Who pays for this paper? I do. Will you ask her if I can have the racing results? Here, now listen. You know what I was saying about our Archie's house? Oh, not again, will do. Well, there's an advert here for a new estate not five minutes away, and they're the double of our Archie's. Is that right? Yeah, and they've got a show house open daily. So tomorrow, Stan, you and me will go and have a deco of that. You must be joking. 
Well, staff, why have I got a funny red nose stuck on or something? No, but... No but, Stanley. Tomorrow. I want to get it into that thick head of yours, just why all the imperfections of this house are staring me in the face. I think she means you, Stanley, staring them in the face. Have we done with that bit? Oh, yeah. Hey, I bet you'll have a cracking dartboard in that's your house. Oh, there won't be a dartboard. I thought you said it had all modern conveniences. Well, there won't be a dartboard inside, will there? That's what your garage is for. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, ye of little faith. Uh, ladies. We were just having a bet as to whether you'd be open or not. And I won. So she'd get served first. Oh, well, thank you very much. Just a bag of sugar, Alf, please. I can't think how I came to run out. Yeah, well, I thought I might as well stop open, you know, because whether I'm through here or through here, I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. Uh 41, please. Yes, well, I think I've got them. Right, yes. There you are. Perfect. Yes. Good night. For our love. Uh... Can I have half a bottle of gin and a large tonic, please, love? Gin. <clears throat> did you, uh, did you know Audrey left? Left your house, you mean? Yeah, last night. Oh, where did she go, did she say? Did she ever mention anything to you about a fella called Tony Ditchburn? Oh, I see. Yes, she did. Ah, she did. Uh, 384, please. Oh, it, uh, it was, uh, very hard for her to leave, you know. I mean, she didn't want to, if that's any consolation. She stayed, really. I mean, I thought we got on very well together. Yeah. Still, nothing lasts forever, does it? Not that I know of. You know, if I'm being honest, I suppose I wasn't surprised when she said no. It's a bit of a rolling stone, all didn't she? Yes, and she wouldn't change, you know, Alf. No, I'm not. No, it's just, you know, when you get used to being on your own like you, somebody comes along and you find you're not used to it at all. I know exactly what you mean. You give out to be sharing it all again. Two of my favourite customers. Oh, I bet you said that to them all. I certainly do. Uh, <laughs> pint of bitter and a glass of lager. Yes. Mr. Sat up babysitting, is Yes. If he can stay away long enough himself. <laughs> Did you want something, Fred? Well, I just wanted to work with Ken, Mrs. Walker. Oh. I'll uh, finish service, shall I? Yes, as long as you don't take all night. Yeah. 80 pence, please. Uh, Thank you. What were it? Uh, and a pint, please, Fred. Only. We've had a right delegation across there this afternoon. That's Councillor Critchley and Alf Roberts. Oh, yeah. They're chucking us out there. Really? Thank you. We are rather busy, you know, Fred. Yeah, I know. But yeah, me and Eunice, we've got to make other arrangements. I mean, who do they think they are? Little tin gods or what? You mean they've actually asked you to leave? Yeah, it comes as a shock and all. I mean, Alf Roberts. <laughs> wow. Well, you don't expect things like that from a mate, dear. Oh, well, if I knew anything about it, Critchley would have been calling the tune there. I wouldn't hold it against Al. No, I do not sound like Al. <coughs> anyway, look, I thought I'd have a word with you. I mean, after all, Ken, <laughs> you are the gaffer, aren't you? Well, yes, I'm in charge over there, but I'm still an employee of the council. Oh, come on. No, no, I mean it. I've got nothing to do with the hiring and the firing, thank God. Thank God you can just sit back and do now, is that it? Hey! Oh, yeah. Fred. Just sit back on your backside, beggar the rest, is that it? Yeah. Charming. Oh. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thanks, love. I'm jiggered. One of them nights when you go get two minutes. Didn't you see Ken Barlow? Oh, yeah, I saw Ken Barlow, all right. And can't he help us? He won't, will he? Whether he can or he can't, he flaming won't. Well, why? I'll tell you what he did say, though. What? He said it was that Councillor Critchley fella working Alf Roberts with his boot, he is. We're still being kicked out of here, though, aren't we? Yeah, well, let him try, but we're going to have a flaming job, and I'm telling you. We got this place over and above board if necessary. I'll barricade the flaming doors and windows, I will. After all we went through to get this place. Look, go to hell, them flaming councillors. We're stopping here. That's definite. We're stopping here. Hilda's trying to move up in the world in Coronation Street at the same time tomorrow here on Granada Plus. We're in a couple of minutes. The Christmas hunt's not looking good in Emmerdale. And over on Breeze, they take potluck. <laughs>